Okay, so I'm going to be doing a bunch of contemplation this weekend, and I just uh, traded the FOMC news uh, stuff. And uh, so that was a random trade I did, and it made money. And I think it made money because I had a 30 pip stop, and I had a 20 pip stop, and I had a 10 pip stop. I had a 40 pip stop. I traded a, uh, I'd say, in the most simplest kind of linear risk um, martingale thing, I've risked maybe 50 pip stop. Uh, so if I have a 50 pip stop and a, and a 40 and a 20 and a 30 and a 10, I have basically created a, like a, a knob that I can turn just like an equalizer and I can run five increments or seven increments of risk tolerance. So this whole thing about risk profitability is really about money in the end, sadly, because if you lost $40, now you made 20, and then you lost 10, and now you made 100, and now you lost five, and then you made 18, and then, and I'm talking about just, you're running 50 tickets a day. Some are designed to make $2, some are designed to make 50 cents, some are designed to make, eh, you want to make 100 pips, you're going to have to wait all week. You're going to have to wait uh, four hours, right? Or 40 seconds. So there's a guy making, in three minutes, he's making the same amount of money you just made in one week. And that size, and all the size is on the way to that size is what trading's about for me. How much work am I willing to put into my... Um, so let's say you're going to build a car. Well, most people are going to tell you you have to queue up the four tires first, or you could get a three-wheeler and then you could be a slob. And, and that's why uh, less is more. Right? Three, a tripod's stronger. Now, if you just go to a bicycle, you've got to have momentum or it's just going to fall over. But you think about the doji is a bicycle that you're riding. And when the momentum dies out, we're either going up or down. It's going to be fucking nuts, right? If the market gets quiet, it's going to have to explode. And especially if it's creeping up on news. Um, the market's just an animal that could go either way. The only problem with trading is as soon as you do any analysis of any type you're usually thinking well do i want to buy or sell if i'm going to go into the market which is the better option it doesn't honestly matter this is a sad fact it does not matter i know that sounds incredibly unbelievable but let's say you bought and sold the market with a three pip stop and your spread is one pip from this point forward, you're paying 30. There's a point at which you, if the spread's two and your stop's at four, you're risking two pips. Um, how big should that ticket be? Now, if you built a, if you just imagine your mind at the, where X meets Y, and then we, st we start to slope out, our risk starts to come in like, well, just like a, you're going to have more horsepower to higher RPM, but you have torque leaving the gate. So you need the torque to scalp out. You got to get out of like, you don't got to do anything. But if you want to feel safe in the market and like, I don't give a fuck if they stop me out because I'm like, dude, I got like fucking 30 pips stops. The risk dollar amount throttle gauge you're building with multiple tickets is the same kind of stability you're going to have if you see like a pebbles and you have the interlocking, right? So you have everything all the way to the grout layer on your tiles, right? You've got your big base that's mortared in. And as you come up, you know, I guess you could build mortar right to the edge, but it's not as fine enough grade, right? It's a, uh, it's a, a different material designed for a different purpose. So the grout is the scalp. You, you can't, I mean, I guess you could do it, right? There's groutless fucking walls. 
But in those, typically, you'll see odd pieces. If you look at brick, um, there's simulated odd pieces. So this is the idea that you take all these rocks, all the fractals in the market, you stack it up the way it needs to be stacked. There's, It's not like you can fucking choose that. It's already been laid out. The vacuums are, are the most important part of the market because this is where the, the doji is going to expand into. Up or down. Don't worry about direction it's not going to fucking matter it's about being a dynamic trader in my opinion the ultimate trader can say dude i don't want to say this but we need to put a hedge on well as soon as you say well, we're going to hedge it you're saying what a pussy why don't you pick a direction because this is where if you told a girl or maybe not these days. I'm gonna. I want you to run a hedge fund for me. It's just the word fund. You're fucked. I want you to hedge a bet. Now, see now, if you said hedge a bet, now all of a sudden you're you're speaking, um, you know, gambler speak, right? And of course, there's this big problem about talking trading as gambling because then it's like, oh boy, right? Oh boy. Uh, now you're really. Uh, <sighs> So the the level of seriousness. So if you told somebody for a kibitz, let's just um, take a hundred bucks, risk twenty dollars a day to make ten dollars a day. Uh, your hit rate's going to go up, and maybe you're making seventy percent winning trades if you have half a fucking brain for the fucking entry. And maybe you let the market. In other words, you put three pendings. I guess it's a bottomless pit. You can see the arrays, I guess, um, if they're completely symmetrical. From the price you're at right now, any moment you look at your screen, for the next four hours, you're going to place a sell limit 20 pips above and a buy limit 20 pips below. Is that a good system? Well, fuck yeah. Now, if a robot was to play that game, you'd only let him play that one game. The iterations of that or the... Um, Maybe it's a constant dollar risk script that comes and spits out. You, now, you could write that, and I've got another keyboard that has eight uh, rows. Um, it's a big grid, and it emulates the time on the chart. So the first four uh, buttons are set to one, two, three, four hour, six, eight, um, 12. You can um, plan the whole week out if you wanted to go... Uh, four hour, eight hour, six hour, maybe four, eight, twelve. Four, eight, twelve daily and weekly. You you know, I mean, it may not be till Thursday, but if you really can't, so somebody made a comment or they sent me an email and they said, you know, I got a day job. Um, so this is the two camps. Let me just do the polarity end goals on the hockey rink there's either this crackhead on one goalie box who completely scalping like with zero spread only commissions and he's sitting there and he's got he, and he's arbitraging by a few nanoseconds with a, some other broker or he's got three screens up and he's a fucking hyper scalper on the euro like okay, this that guy right then there's a guy that's like this uh ryan guy who's tr really an investor. He's like, dude, if I stay in this trade long enough, or he's like, you know, 500 pips stop is a pretty healthy stop, you know. Um, now, maybe on a 1K, that's 50 bucks, right? I mean, that's pretty good. Like, if you told somebody, well, we'll be in this trade for like three months, you're risking 50 bucks. Oh, okay. How much you spend on a meal? I mean, I just went out to this restaurant the other day, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Dude, I'm sorry, but you're overcharging like, the ambiance. I'm like, holy shit. Not unless I could take the waitress home. She was cute. So I was like, yeah. Um, sure, I'll babysit your kids. Just come over, sit on my lap, we'll talk about it. And um but yeah, God man. It, it this money thing is a problem. When I started trading Forex, you know, I thought went to the grocery store one day and it was twenty five bucks. And I thought, God, I'm not that hungry. I could have put on a few K. I could have traded a 10 K. Um, I could be in a 5 K right now, riding some stupid ass wave up and down. 
Um, I'd say my only, uh, and it's not really a problem, I guess, is that I typically only I'm very bullish and I don't like selling the market. Um, so I just really a human nature thing, I suppose. Um, I'm trying to unlearn, I'm trying to, I'm trying to become a seller, but I, I guess I cringe in both directions when the market isn't. It's no nobody on this earth uh, that's ever done anything isn't wishing the best for their uh, efforts. So as soon as you put the trade on, you know you're rooting for your team and. So the loyalty thing, the loyalty to the decision you made, all this stuff is, well, at least for me, because I'm still conscious, I haven't got Alzheimer's yet. I'm, you know, living a, it's a horror living every day. All the decisions that need to be made about this, that, what's the best way to go, what's the most efficient without being a hack. Can I be a slob and not too much of a slob? Where can I cut corners? How much can I get away with? Um, if somebody offered you this exact same house at 20 grand less, you might, might even be suspicious. Why is it 20 grand off? Is there something wrong with it? Um, think about, uh, for me, um, so connecting, trading to waiting for a good, uh, you'll see people at the gas station when the price goes down. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, I see somebody here on this uh, Discord thing talking about uh, internationalman.com articles. Um, China is days away from killing the petrodollar. Now, this whole petrodollar news stuff. Oh, my God. And this poor Ryan Brown is sucked into this shit. Uh, Bill Williams, which I think is completely correct by saying that the market moves and then people have to make up a story about it. Because if you look at the fucking chart... How fucking long do you think a market could trade sideways? For God's fucking sake, it's the dumbest fucking trade in your life. Now, that being true, I'm kind of a little arrogant, so I won't take that trade necessarily all the time. And hopefully I'm slightly in on a swing trade, and I say, oh, you know what, this is a place to add. Um, I do want to always be in the market, so if you're missing out, what's the cure for that? trade a hundred fucking stop and go do it i'm at i'm at a thousand dollars i own i mean you don't have a thousand dollars but you put a stop on it end of the world stop for god's sakes right that's what uh brian um that's what rashke calls it linda linda rashke she's a trader so there's nothing special about ict or what i'm doing or anybody's doing or this guy here forex hangout guy there's nothing special it's just how we would manage any crisis like making coffee in the morning. So if you stayed any, has anybody visited somebody and stayed at their house for like a week? Let me tell you something. Um, don't do it. <laughs> no, do it because it's like going to jail <laughs> in a way. Um, I'm very cognizant, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm not an asshole in real life, so I'm very polite and try not to offend people. And, you know, I don't want to mess up, like, their bathroom. <laughs> I don't want to trash it out, right? I, I really, I'm pretty polite. Like, if I blow up the toilet, I would order, like, one online and have the, uh, they got a guy in the neighborhood now delivery. <laughs> it's a Uber Amazon guy. <laughs> Anyways, um... So, I don't know, I'm pretty polite in person, but this this trading thing, yeah, I'm I'm pissed off because um <laughs> empowered trading <laughs> pissed me off. Only because in the old days we would actually go and see these people in the flesh, like it was like a real show. Now I feel like I'm downloading like a cartoon of reality. But yeah, I mean, sure. Um and the idea that you're going to need to backtest stuff, this is fucking absolutely fucking retarded speak. Who the fuck needs a backtest a 20 pip stop? If I told you, find a place on that chart that you could have placed a 20 pip stop, now we're talking. Or a 50 pip stop. Now we are talking. Okay, we can build a house now. If you tell me the studs are 16 inches, let's go. I'll build my, I'll build an add-on to the house. 
because I need the exercise. I'm just sitting around too much. These fucking shards. And uh, so, yeah, it's really uh, a lot of work trading. And it's also not a lot of work. You plan the whole week out in advance. In fact, if, if this poor Ryan Brown would have looked at the fucking monthly and weeklies instead of, dude, if you're going to fucking do that trade, watch out because the train's coming. Like, if you're not aware of the vacuums on the monthly, you're fucked. And there's fake breakouts on the monthly that are fucking 100 pip wick edges. And you have daily hammers inside of the edge of a fucking 80% of the market's ranging, man. Your trends evaporate like fucking mirages as you're coming up on top. Yeah, fuck, dude. It, market exploded. Boom. Psh. So on Friday, I held through Friday and I wanted to get out of most of the position. Like, my favorite thing is to dump the whole fucking thing and come back in with super fucking tight. Like, I'm going to buy three pips below. You fuckers. So, market's very, very vicious. And that's why you have to have fucking. 8 pips, stop, 16, go go like an Oregon, 8, 16, 32, 64, go down stops, and have have layers. Uh, I think when you get more money in the account, you throw some harebrained shit out there, like I did on fucking FOMC, it was fucking amazing, I had these goddamn deep state orders that were sitting down there, they finally got tagged, these cocksuckers were a bit down there, and I only say cocksuckers because... Um, if you've ever been in a big position and been thinking, oh, we're just going to drift, it's going to be a typical, like, I guess we're never going back to this. Oh, no, because the whole time it's drifting. This is scary. Um, you can be up, like, in the market, doesn't know you're up X, okay? You could be up 3 bucks, or you could be up 300 The market doesn't know that, but the part of your brain saying, um, oof. Uh, and be, and if you have moved your stop, you certainly would only make 150 instead of 300. Or maybe, uh, maybe you only made 80 bucks. Like you moved your stop up and you moved up. This is another thing. Imagine 10, you're allowed to trade a 10K per day. And you divvy up into 10 1Ks. You're basically like putting, you're saying, and this is why trading is an art, is because real art is is not done infinitely. Like you can't just paint a painting and go, dude, and it ends up being three miles by four miles. And you have to say to somebody at some point, dude, really, you got to crop that bitch down. So when you crop it, that's when it becomes art. What can you do with $200? How many trades are you allowed? And just harebrained shit. You can place it on every fucking... Like you're going to... You're playing eight... If you're trading eight pairs, which I used to trade all the time, eight pairs. I was swing trading. Because I was really busy. I didn't have time to scalp and all that bullshit. So I put up eight charts. And I'm always saying that for a person that is saying they want to trade the five-minute chart, I think you can only trade one. Like this guy is trading five... Um, as far as hang out guy, I don't think I can do what he's doing because my mind comes unwrapped. I can see all the breakouts on the five minute. I can see a fifteen. I can see a, a doji, on, a five minute doji, and then boom. And I'm thinking that's somebody's fucking trade, man. Some guy just cleaned up on that dollar wise because he's in a fat. He's in a really fat position. And so the whole continuum from. That to, and of course, everybody brings their own. <sighs> See, I'm a perfectionist. And so I, I aim for perfection. I know I'm not going to hit it. But, and of course, this is another thing. Is if you really have a true belief whether the market's going up or down, you're really going to contour your shit to, um, and Ryan Brown's not wrong when he said that, you know, if you try to make five pips with a 100 pip stop, you're probably going to make your money. Right. Until it goes against you. And of course, if and you could probably survive it if you're trading in high resolution trading, is what I'm doing, is high res trading. 4K, right? 
eight, one sixteen k coming? Are they going to get eight k? Like what's next, right? So and then eventually you just step into somebody's room through fiber, right? Um, but it's not going to help the fact that you either want to be around people or you don't, and uh, so if you can afford to not be around people, imagine um, you didn't have to leave your house to do your own shopping for food. You just ordered the fucking shit and had people bring it. Um, you know, now you're going to be, uh, you might atrophy in the other part of your life. Or, you know, um, maybe you're loving that. And maybe you're about to die so you don't give a fuck. Or maybe you're, uh, you've just been born. And that's how it is when you're just born. People are bringing you shit. And you just don't, you just, you just, you don't care. You don't have to, I mean, you're basically unmanageable. That's what they say when people get older, they become like an infant again. Um, but, you know, this idea that you're going to risk money, the word risk is just not, I mean, people are paying a lot of money in insurance because they're afraid of the risk something bad's going to happen. And then people that, I guess, trust in mother nature that gravity exists and we can, these are absolutes we can count on. That's why I'm a big Ayn Rand fan. Is that uh, we can count on this uh, this uh, metaphysical fact. And in the market, it's really pretty. Other than you may you may be on an ECN, uh, or you may be on just whatever broker that has. And of course, Asia, there is no forcing the market to have liquidity in a tight spread. And if you watch the spread fluctuations, you probably chart that too. You probably even, you know, like fuck volume, right? Let's let's chart the goddamn. Uh, let's do a Renko chart of the spread fluctuations. It's not going to fucking help you. With the fact that the market could do anything. Of course, that's your advantage to realize that the market could do anything. It sounds scary at first. It could also go up and down. So it can go up and down um, erratically, and that's a given. And it does that. We know it does that. Are you okay with placing? Uh, arrays and traps of orders without duplicating a ticket which unless you have a scripts that are overlaid in a logarithmic way that end up being um and also in other words you're going to have 10 different ratios you're also going to not only have ratios but you have another layer of 10 uh say double pip risk that's 20 uh, alg uh, we want to call them algos, 20 rules, right? So you're running 10 to 50 pip stops, and you're running, say, interwoven, you're running 15s. On the odds, you're running something else. You have evens and odds. If you took, um, like, a simple way to think about this is you could uh, take one script and write it so that it says, this is going to last for four hours. We're going to interweave um and just for risk sake let's first start out with a master stop what does it cost you to find out as mark daggles would say whether this is going to make sense and ryan brown could have done it selling into this he could have scalped something but he's he's doing a basket all or nothing um right there you change one metric in this approach to trading and you just traded you change the trajectory of the, your trading count into the future because if your system cannot deal if it can't make money from a um a power thrust <laughs> that sounds naughty um from getting raped in the alley right so the market could rape you in the alley or it could sit there and gently just and so i've done videos live with real money i mean i know it wasn't you know I'm running a demo to broadcast, but trust me, I've, I've been through all this uh, emotional. I, I used to sit on the on the uh, in bed, and I had Australia, New Zealand up, and I'm like, you know, these things are fucking really uh, pretty close. Uh, the spread sucks dick on the uh, no events events to people in New Zealand. I understand it's very pretty, but their spread sucks like giant monster elephant dick because it's it, it's also just. You know, starting off bad and gets worse or, or uh, coming to Asia. But it's very tempting because it gives you more patterns. So this is the big um, mind benders that the more volatility, the more erratic, the more, oh, look, there's a triple bottom. Well, there's a lot. And 
so then you go to the higher time frames. But around when you go to the higher time frames, well, there's no fucking setup. So these setups are coming and going from a five minute to a weekly. So if you know the setup, and, and, and the problem with MetaTraders don't let you zoom in. The only way to really zoom in is to truncate, take the whole chart down to just five, five, eight bars. And real contest in trading, in my opinion, is is to forward test and have no history behind you and just say, dude, if it drops 150 pips, I'm buying at least a 1K with a 50 pip stop. And maybe five pips away, I will buy another one with a 40 pip stop. And then eight pips from there, I could do Fibonacci. Now, that's the only real use of Fibonacci, in my opinion. Is a way to not repeat a price. If you take the Fibonacci summation and insert that into the script price uh, distance-wise, and you take that, in which I have done, it's very mind-bending, I had to put on graph paper, is add 20% to that and see how that, that intervaled. So the only thing with Fibonacci is 618. So you offset from 50%. All you've done is weighted it. So you've created a weight, a counterbalance for the pendulum swing. We all can see these swings, but after all the years of looking at the chart and sitting in front of a potential trigger pull, uh, is a completely different mindset than placing a trap array and coming back at the end of the day and saying, uh, like that song by Joni Mitchell, uh, when they put their pennies on the rail and then they want to see their lucky prize. So they put their pennies on the railroad tracks and um, this curl that was being abused, that was what they would do. And uh, so they would, for fun, and I guess that's the thing. Now that's the mystery kind of fun surprise of, look, I had half a fucking brain to put the goddamn order in. Just like ICT does the same thing, but ICT explains it to you. The only problem with ICT is he makes it sound like, like see, he has some fucking, he's, he's uh, chilling with the guy that owns um, Citizens Bank and he's over there mopping, you know, he's over there having beers with the guy that owns... Uh, Chase Manhattan and Lemon Bank and well, you know, these guys at Lemon Bank, man, you should see them like they got fucking. I mean, dude, they're hunting your stops like. <laughs> forget about it. What the fuck is that? Like, I'm gonna, I just, this is hysterical shit, and that comes up in this guy's stream too. Some ass fuck comes in here with that. Yeah, well, you know, the banks are coming after your stops. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the I just have my psychotic. Oh, this guy I know on Facebook. I took him back as a friend because I <laughs> felt bad. No, this guy fucking since he was spitting up uh, vomit in his crib, I think. But uh, he's like, should I get off Facebook? They're taking my information. <laughs> Dude, you're on Facebook all day long, of course. Come on. Um, but yet, you know. Sometimes that's the only communication I have with people on town of Facebook. Yeah, I went digital. I went total. I got you look. I went too digital here on computers, I, and that streaming thing was just, uh, oh, just too much, too much insanity. Um, I guess I would do it. Like I said, I would only do that if I had like a co-host because you need to have somebody that you can just torture. <laughs> Uh, torture each other and have fun, but it's it's tough to speak into the air. I didn't think I could ever do it. I was in a chat room there where I couldn't get the chat room to run. So uh, they said, well, you can have a mic, you can talk. And I thought, well, this isn't going to work because then I can't tell you. You can't immediately tell me I'm full of shit and it's <laughs> I'm going to have impatience. I wanna, I'm impatient. I want to hear you. I want to argue with you. Um, or I guess I'd be nice to you. See, that's the thing. And, of course, when you type, it always looks vicious because it's so stark, you know. Uh, it's black and white when you type. It's a very binary type. Texting, to me, is just, oof, I don't like it because, I mean, how can I possibly convey how sarcastic I'm trying to be? And uh, this doesn't doesn't work out right. Uh, but, yeah, this Ryan guy and this guy, I don't know, this guy, Forex Hangout guy, uh, did a response to my video i didn't even watch it because I, I would probably be overwhelmed uh, i'm very sensitive so i get that's why i spaz out when people criticize me I'm very defensive and very uh 
just ha- I want instant justice against anything that's and that of course now this comes into the the trading thing so I had to build my trading system around my um, my uh, view of the world and so like you know if and of course uh, the stubbornness that uh, this guy Ryan has and also you know all these people are they're good traders because at the time that they're trading and they're making money they're oh this is working out uh, so is it working out because you planned it to work out that way or um, did you plan for it to not to work out and you took that in consideration you're actually making money because you planned on the parachute policy where you're like maybe if I'm wrong I'm gonna have to go with the crowd now if you resent the crowd as much as I do, it's a problem. Uh, like, um, say you go to the store, and you're like, really, this is the latest fucking thing? Like, what is going on? Like, I don't know if you've been looking at cars, but I'm looking at cars. So Lexus comes out with this car that has this inverted grill shit going on. I'm like, what the fuck is this, a vacuum cleaner? Have you seen this new Lexus? And then I saw the BMW faceplate change, and I thought, oh, my God. There goes your BMW. I mean, the whole world's melting into this sea of common trend bullshit. Uh, and this is the doji of life. This is when everybody agrees. It sucks dick. Uh, yeah, that's a good price. Okay, well, I guess. You know, like, and the volatility guys that want to make money because they're like, dude, I want to know if I'm right or wrong. Come on, either cut my balls off or let me, you know, hug me. Um, and it, Everybody has a little piece of that personality in them. So everybody's going to experience what's going on in the current condition of the market in their own unique way of their own filter they were built around and how they were raised. Um, that's why I think it's funny if you took some uh, guy in the street and unbeknownst to him, you would just... Uh, it, it's probably not a trade you would do because you realize the flaw of moving averages. But... If you wrote into the script for the, if you had this guy go check the 15 um, and only press this button on the 15 minute chart, so you'd have a, you'd have some kind of array there. Um, I don't know if you want a robot to do it. You know, notice another thing is that the problem with a robot in a way is he's going to take, um, He'll do a trade. You have to tell him, hey, don't trade during this time, right? But if you know somebody that will pull the trigger or will drop scripts for you uh, that you can trust, I guess, to show up, but you'd be able to see if they're performing, whether you pay them or not. So I'm sure you could hire some kids this summer to trade for you. Once these kids get out of these fucking John Dewey indoctrination fucking shit that melts their goddamn brain and makes them do more drugs than Hitler I mean Jesus people are doing opiates like dude really are you serious um really it's that bad you're doing you're doing heroin just trade the market it's uh more exciting eh, heroin's definitely the opposite of trading if you're nervous about losing money or maybe you find um of course uh it's also a big rush to go to the casino I suppose and so we've all made money on some trade where we're like, holy shit, I'll keep trading if this is how it's going to be. There's no way everybody's winning every trade and there's no way everybody's losing every trade. So we're making some kind of money on certain trades. And so when I started trading, I thought, well, I have to find out what that is because I've been told all these rules like, well, what you do is you find out what trades are working and you keep doing those trades. Well, what if I made money... I made a lot of money because I happened to be in really big on a trade that wasn't that great, but I had to take profit that was eight pips away. I'm like, shit, I got to trade like that more often. Who isn't recording that in their fucking mind going, that seems to work. He said, do what works. Um, I want to sound like Brian Regan, but the Brian Regan cracks me the fuck up. Hey, that seems to be working. Let's do more of that. Let's do more of this, uh, I like that 10 pips target with the 15 pips stop and we're risking a little bit more, but we're more, right? Um, 
Let's do that trade in the morning, Joe. Hey, Joe, you want to wake up tomorrow morning to the same 20 pip winner we did this other morning? Now, if you hunted these down, yeah, you could do that trade. But maybe you're going to get in 10 pips deep to make 20 pips. You're not going to get in at the market to make 20 pips because this price sucks dick right now. There's no fucking way anybody in this fucking world pulls the trigger on any goddamn trade and says they were never down. I mean, I just, okay, maybe, maybe it happens one out of a hundred times. One out of uh, 20. I'll give you one out of five. Even at one out of five, you're taking some kind of drawdown. Even on a pending, even on a stop, every fucking trade, you have to give it breathing room. So, um, I don't know whose thing this is, but here's an example. Look at this. Sorry to just go insanely not talking about what the image is up on the screen, but, uh, I guess I, I'm doing a live stream onto the tape. It's going to be ranting for some time. So I, wanna, I just had some coffee made in a $30,000 coffee machine. I said to the guy, okay, um, I know you're charging me 50 cents to run the shit through here, but, uh, <laughs> wow, it does taste better. Paid 50 cents more for the Starbucks. They ran it through the Mooley. I took it through the fucking inverted French press. So I asked the guy, what's, who hates the French the most? And let's call it that machine. <laughs> Instead of French coffee. Uh, let's call it that. So, this is the weekend. Now, I did a lot of a lot of graphs. I drew a lot of pictures, um, and then I went on vacation here recently. And so I'm coming back to the drawing board. But since I made money on this um, system of running a 50 pip stop, seems to be, or even a 100 pip stop seems to almost guarantee that you could probably make 20 pips. Now, I know those are bad, bad, um, but it's going to, uh, hmm. let's say if you put in a 50 pip stop to make 15 pips and you're down 30 pips and you have a 50 pip stop, you're down 30 pips, uh, people would say, well, cut your losses short. Why wait to get stopped out on your 50 pip stop? Because if you get out now, dumb fuck, you're going to be out of the market. And it's not fear of missing out. You've got to be in something. Okay, it's, it's fear of not making any money. So fear of missing out is not a bad thing. There's a cure. It's called, do instead of overdosing, have a half a beer, you know? Have a sip of wine. You don't have to drink five fucking cases, dude. I mean, and of course... If you drink five cases a year, maybe you still got a problem. Um, you don't want to abuse yourself too much. Whether it's junk food or whether it's uh, alcohol. I'm ready to become an alcoholic, to be honest with you. Um, I've been pretty dry my whole life, but I had some good beer the other day. So I had a buddy. <laughs> we don't talk anymore because he thinks that the driver shot J JFK. See the gun? I'm like, dude. You got fucking macular degeneration. I love you to death, but you're as old as me. Um, yeah, what, at what point do you tell the pilot, hey, listen, man, you know, you can't see. <laughs> Maybe I know there's autopilot, but and this Ryan Brown is so cute that he decided to let the robot trade for him because his strategy is so fucking killer. <laughs> And this thing goes on a mad storm and blows up his account. I mean, I almost think he's kidding. Dude, you can't make that shit up. And he, poor guy's only got like 200 views. I mean, this is this is this is laugh riot shit. <laughs> Some guy said things for the comic relief, but I know people beat him up. But man, dude, man, bro. And then people, you can make fun of me all day long if I'm novice at something. Like if it's my first time jumping out of a plane and I shit my pants. You got to give me that, right? You got to give the person that you just, you know, just shit yourself because it's too much, right? I mean, everybody needs that break in life. But, uh, I don't, you know, it's risky driving in traffic. I was just driving home and, uh, let me tell you something, man. 
Not everybody's awake or woke, as they say, and that's in traffic. Now, I do feel like trading is like driving in bad traffic. Anything could happen. So you really, and so I'm going to play a little bit of this. I'm going to bounce around in this in this tape here. So this guy, I want to have, uh, give this guy the, the award. I, I dropped out of the streaming, and, and this Ryan guy dropped out of the, um, he tapped out. He goes, <laughs> shut down my channel for six months. Hey, man, you know, if you got, I mean, if you got a hot wife like this guy got, you know, I mean, that's why he looks gay because, you know, the gays have the hottest chick. So, um, you know, it's like, dude, I mean, I understand, you know, like you can't focus on trading because your wife's too hot. Um, I don't think I could have, you know, because I really feel like, oh, honey, you, did you stub your toe? Um, let me get something for that. So you don't want to be a wife beater, right? So most guys are going to be nice to their wife because that's the baby factory and all that nonsense. But just out of courtesy to another human being, don't forget, chicks are people too. Um, <laughs> so this is the problem. And uh, I think that's really the problem of mankind is the, the women. <laughs> but for mankind... But yeah, it's, it's tough sledding there. <laughs> Easy to fall in love with the right personality, I suppose. You definitely have to be compatible. <laughs> you cannot be uh, fighting. But hey, most trading's done by guys. Not a lot of girls out here trading. You know, um, should be more. I definitely think that um, some people, that uh, I think that it really it's doable. I think everybody could trade. Honestly, even ICT could trade better, <laughs> but ICT, I mean, he obviously he knows what's going, what he's expecting to happen. But the problem with him, I swear to God, he'll be like, Well, it's a Sunday night, this is the beginning of the day, we're gonna draw a line here, dude. <laughs> that's that shit does. I mean, I know that will that all prices will mean something. This is the myth of Fibonacci, all prices mean something. If you're on the wrong side of that price for more than, what is it, two hours? Like, if you told somebody, um, I want to borrow, borrow uh, I want, uh, could you loan me about $5 and I might pay you back in two weeks? I want to go do a trade. This is the guy that won the Nobel Peace Prize, was the guy that created micro loans. So you do a micro, it's a micro lot, micro loan. Um, God, why aren't kids trading, you know? Um, and of course, I would really like to see somebody, and maybe you could do it on a spreadsheet. God, I hope there's a spreadsheet that you would just go, well, here's, here's the daily prices, and just have the spreadsheet kind of give you highlight hot spots, right? Uh, better than uh, depth of market, because I'm just looking at pure price. Um, closing prices in a spreadsheet. So you're just looking at it going, holy shit. That's the price there. And then as you expand the grid to two pips and four pips and whatever, now you start to get dimension, vertical dimension on the chart. That's when you fix the scale. I don't know if I'm just going to go on esoteric rant, I guess. So if, you, if you're into linear shit, you better stop the tape right now. So imagine you are you are here and you have a completely binary, you know, binary view of the future. You don't weight it. You've got an equal amount of buys and sells, and um, it's based on how deep are those orders is based on the last known spaz attack uh, vibration. And then there is the ultimate giant move. It's just fucking, in, like, in other words, the monthly goes sideways for five months and then it's going to take off and say it just rips. And it's cutting through either uncharted water, it's never fucking been there before, which is actually pretty violent. Look at Bitcoin. I mean, once, look at gold. Once it went above a thousand, people were like, holy shit. It doubles at a thousand. Just bring up the chart, right? So then I heard this ad on the way home. This shit cracks me up. All of a sudden, the people selling you this shit are becoming claiming their market and they understand like i'm surprised the guy didn't say on the radio well we just had wave three of bitcoin 
Yeah, we just had a bubble pop. All wave threes are the popping of the bubble. Wave four, just conceptually speaking, of classic Elliott wave, Prechter, Robert Prechter Elliott wave, which actually his Elliott wave is sociological. I didn't read the book, but I've heard excerpts of him speak about it. This is all philosophical talk about trading. When it comes down to it, when the market opens tomorrow, are you going to place pendings above and below at uh, random things, or are you going to put them up on vacuum ledges and basements? So my view of the world is rooftops and basements. If I just look at a bar chart, the basement of a bar chart is the bottom of the, right? So you have the rooftop of the uh, candle of the wick, and you have the basement underneath. So you have these two voids that exist, guaranteed fucking teed. Every print of every bar has built into it all the data you need to know. Now, I had the Bill Williams book. Now, I diligently studied this shit. Like, I'm sure people have and made money. And I'm not saying that you can't make money doing what ICT is doing, but I, I just hate when people uh, make it sound like um, I, I don't know, I'll cryptify it, encryptify it like, I don't know. Um, I'm looking at it like if I have a tool that is set to a half inch or 10 millimeters, I'm looking for a nut to screw with that. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for like every, every time, if you own a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if you own a, if you can see a pullback, if you understand the concept of a pullback, whether it's up or down or a pull up, um, pull back, you know, you're, uh, this pullback, how do you get in a pullback? Okay, the, the simplest setup in the world. You've determined the trend's up. We don't want to jump right on. And let's just do a buying. For me, for my sake, I would like to propose a buying strategy. So it also doesn't matter. What I meant to say 20 minutes ago is that it doesn't matter whether you buy or sell. It's how much room are you going to give the market to crush you out. And you could have, actually have the other leg kick in so that's the hedge concept which is also puts you at the precipice of possibly getting whipsawed if your stops do not meet the qualifications of the current market taking the spread into consideration in the asian session this is how it is um so let's look at every aspect of this thing um when the market's open at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they're, they're going to shift the daylight savings time in Europe coming up here now. So your broker's going to shift back. And people that are really anal about their four-hour chart candles and all that stuff. And I used to be like that. Okay, this is before I got, um, I guess, um, bent over and reamed on a trade. Now, it wouldn't matter whether that trade was $80 or $800, but I think it would. <laughs> in other words, when you lose $800 on one ticket, it's a whole different thing than losing $800 on 10 tickets because, let's fucking face it, you did not lose $800 on that trade. You distributed that risk over those tickets. Psychologically, for everybody, that's going to mean something different. If I took everything out of your shopping cart when you got home, i go, well, did you really need this? That's $3. you really need that? It's $8. It's a $56 grocery bill. Did you really need that or you just have money to blow? Um and people that have money to risk in these markets, um, like this guy's got like at least 10 grand in his account, I'm pretty sure. I think he has 70 grand in there. Um, yeah, sure, put on a trade and be down 500, 800. <laughs> Not me. I just have too much, I'm too careful. Like, I just, I'm real one of those really cheap people. <laughs> Plus, I'd rather have the fun of doing something myself. So to me, if I make $120 in 10 minutes, I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm real good with that. Like, I don't need to make $500. I'm not going to wait an hour. I don't want to be down $800, I guess. Um, no, I'd be down $800 
and I'll I can handle that for twelve hours. Uh, if I did dollar per hour risk, now this is another thing to consider is if you're going to try to make a hundred dollars per hour, let's just put that as a thing, and you're in X to make uh, ten pips, so you want to make ten pips. There's a standard lot, um, and you make that in. 10 minutes, can you stop trading for the next 50 minutes and say you're making $100 an hour? Yeah. Um, scenarios are, it's just incredible the depth of shit that, I mean, you're talking about with just even trading with a hard, everything you do is, okay. What if I sent you out in the market with two scripts? You're only allowed to buy and sell. You're either going to run a 12 stop or a 24. And or I could say to you, here is a 20 pip stop and a 50 pip stop. Now go forth and multiply. The art would be, and of course, let's imagine double your double ratio win. The art is to find a market that is running in that mode. You have a, a you have um, a, you know, this certain size hex nut, and you're only allowed to turn shit that's that hex nut. But if you have two fucking wrenches, how much more shit can you fucking do? Well, you can actually almost open a bit. If you have enough tools, you have metric and American, and you got the fucking square, and you got the star, and you got the fucking things, and you got the, the fucking, you know, the Roberts heads. You got the Roberts, you got the fucking Allen. You got some fucking party of screwdriver heads, right? Who's the fucking professional? Guy that shows up with a flat head? Well, I get it at the market and hope for the best. You know, like, so, right? I mean, come on. Uh, you got to, this is a, trading is a real bitch. Because it's like anything else that you do that's artful. It's a lot of fucking work. You can't just be like, dude, well, I, I'm so good at analyzing the market. What I've done here is I've taken it down to one fucking entry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, as they say, how's that working out for you? Now, like I said, if you have a day job, and this guy, Ryan Brown, apparently has enough money to blow, and how he convinced somebody to board his train is just hilarious. It shows you how the, the faith. That, like I said, it's not like the guy's not good looking. He, like, he's got a hot wife, right? Um, he's obviously attracted somebody that, uh, and, you know, he doesn't cuss like a sailor, and he's not like, hitting a crack pipe and he's like you know he's very um a very uh what do you call it uh serious profile picture um sincere what do they call it oh, i can't remember the well, it looks melancholy you know uh so um you know he just reminds me of uh a kid doing a science project about trading. Well, I've tried this, and I need to work on that a little more. I'm building this robot and for show and tell. And uh, that's why I look at the Ryan Brown thing. It's like a show and tell robot. <laughs> you bring to school at the end of the summer. Look at only had these draw, and you just see his chart where it's like up, 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 and the big pullback. Uh, uh, there's something wrong. Like your robot shouldn't look like that. You should see a nice work. It should look like the market. You, you, if if you're trading the market, your equity should look like the market, but getting the the best of, you know, I've looked at enough robots, and I'm thinking about buying a, a high-speed computer here just to crunch. I'm going to try to find out what is the best. Because my strategy tester is taking too long. And I don't know if you saw it state drive or something, but it's just taking too long because i got a bunch of ideas. But... You know, you somebody's just gonna rip through that shit and just go, okay, dude, that's that's retarded what you're doing there. And the thing is, is that I also still haven't uh, discovered the. Um, I guess I have to, you know, like that's a that's a labor of insanity, love. I guess playing with robots, and so I've been working on uh, trying to learn uh, networking too on my computer here. <laughs> Because I can't seem to get my files to just. And I got my Bluetooth here, and it's kind of scary. Like, uh, I'm just kind of pissed off. 
but I got my Android to work, so. Um, but the network connections to me, pretty fragile. I wish there was a app that would just go, dude, we're going to hook you up whether you like it or not. Like, I authorize you, and then I had permission issues on my stupid fucking Windows 10, and they're still asking me, even though I hacked in. Very proud of myself. I hacked into the, uh, came into the command prompt there and told Windows, knock this shit off. And I opened up some secret file in there. Uh, I'm, I'm tired of it. I give up. I want an app that does an app for the apps that's going to do a global shell um, monitoring. That's the robot. I guess that's, you know, I guess hire a hot chick to come in and manage your uh, network system, make sure you put the routers down low near the floor. Uh, yeah, in no chairs. Sorry, you can't sit down. But, yeah, it's really it's a technical world, and we're trading online now, so it's even more important that, you know, everything's working to the uh, standards, right? OSHA standards on you. Can you imagine if OSHA was involved in the... Or, uh, in the uh, computer shit how fucking expensive computers would be all right let me go back let me go back into this trading thing so i have a lot to say here i'm gonna be on here for a while so you better tune out tune out i'm doing a i'm doing a recorded stream i brought my i brought my uh my sound effects with me tonight Trying to keep it real here. I'm drinking my clover brewed coffee. I really felt like I'd arrived. That's such a nice uh, robust taste to it. Very robust. Inverted brewed. Um, so here's the deal. I'm watching the uh, Forex Hangout guy, and uh, he's very funny. I think he intends to be funny about saying this Ryan Brown. So I'm going to try to skip around here. You're talking about the Ryan Brown, just like me. Who couldn't resist, you know? It's so cute. And the Forex Hangout guy is a little bit younger than me. Uh, I'm very conservative. I think I'm pretty much... Uh, I'd say I just like the old days, to be honest with you. Even 50 years ago was just... Wow. Yeah, sure, there's people getting mugged. But, um... What's with the fucking world, dude? So, since I was on vacation, I wasn't plugged into the... Um... The world of, uh... Um... You know, kind of, uh interested in what the current affairs are there used to be a show this thing is still on the air right current affairs so that was another thing i had this really hot girlfriend for about seven years and um you know she watched this shit and i was like really I, that's why i had to get rid of her oh my god I, you know if you had one eyeball and you i could have a conversation with you then maybe right um so what's the depth of somebody? And of course, that, I guess that's my the real fascination with the market. As far as the markets, market being like a um, just a real mystery, and um, in some regards, and also a, um, a romantic pursuit because the market can go up and down without stopping or it can go up and down in a drift and it can go up and down in a uh, very fast time up and down just grinding you know they also say the market is the war of attrition which is a grinding or a sliding and a drift and you know to have the ability to you're tracking an animal that changes from it's a shape a shapeshifter 
you know, they, people think that really exists, but it doesn't. The market's a shapeshifter. In other words, the market has a cadence that can go from um, just a lightning bolt to um, kind of a very... Uh, well, after the lightning bolt, there's always going to be a diminishment of the next price pulse. Or we're going to go, whatever the climax is, and you'll know it when you see it because it'll be probably 15 minutes, I'd say. Uh, 50 pips in 15 minutes is pretty good. And then, but what did it do on the five-minute chart? And so this is why they would say only trade in one instrument because if you really want to see what's going on, you got your tick chart on the right. I always run right to left, so I see some people do put the tick on the left, but this is the default platform. I feel it's like you ended up playing left-handed guitar with it because nobody... You're right-handed, but all you had available was a left-handed guitar, and this is the way MetaTrader boots, which I'm not really crazy about, is the tick charts on the left, and I just immediately feel like I'm in Europe on the wrong side of the road or something. Or in the Bahamas on the wrong side of the road. So I always had my tick chart... My leading edge is right. Then I put my five. And I've done triple, uh, you know, triple, tr you could triple trade it. I mean, really, the, the ultimate is to have uh, either dual screen or triple screen, if you've got enough screen space, and run. Or you just st stick with, no, I already know in my mind's eye what the, ha what the five minute probably looks like on this one hour chart. Uh, and if it's about price, it really isn't going to matter fucking at all because you know you're going to buy 10, minutes, 10 pips deep. Now, this is where the story of the market, the scenario, which is a story of the past behavior of the market, comes in, distorts your view of true depth of market. So does depth of market bullshit level two because you're looking at other people's tickets or past history trading in popular levels of market profiles, all bullshit too, because... What really fucking matters is, are you willing to put a 50 pip stop on one of those ideas? And is your 50 pip stop 70 pips from where we're at now, which means you're going to buy 20 pips deep? That matters so much. Or is your 50 pip stop, and you have a 50 pip stop that you, that you can pull every hour at the market. Imagine this. Every time the market's down, if you just had one rule, and I'm saying you can't have one rule, but for one, f say you have, a, like I said, a 20 rules a day. Well, you got what? Well, God just picked the best rule. No, because they're all situational. And this is what the complexity of trading just does not, nobody tells anybody this. Uh, look, dude, are you going to be on the, I mean, it's a real cold, hard question. Can you babysit the market or do you have a day job? If you've got a day job, you're almost better off because. Um, but not this day and age because there's people that have access to their. So this guy who was this guy, Dalton, that uh, Dayton or something, this guy that I was like, dude, here. And then he's like, dude, you said the market's going up. I'm like, dude, I mean. You can obviously see that if I said that it's come out to the ballpark today, it's not supposed. There's a 50% chance of rain. That's how the market is. There's a 50% chance that, and if you're in really big, it, a little mistake's gonna mean a lot. You can be off by a little bit. If you're in too big, all of a sudden that's gonna cost you more than being off a little bit. Or you could be way off on a small position. You'd be like. Phew. Whatever, dude. I wasn't dumb enough to fucking load the wagon on that fucking one price. And this guy was running very tight prices, so in essence, he was getting in a 20 pip range in a serious position. But what if you spread your grid out? So somebody also sent me an email going, saying, I um, can't find it now. Uh, the guy said, um, uh, What about uh, this grid thing? You know, everybody has the same question. What if they stop you out? Um, plan on it um in other words this is why when i was a kid people would beat the shit out of me right and so i just decided well i'll just crack jokes about myself so i'll beat up on myself this way they'll be oh you think you're pretty fun. yeah i already know i'm fucking out of my mind I, you know whatever you call me i'm i'm there before you 
Yeah. Um, so that's a way by winning by, and, and of course that's disturbing to a bully because they're like, well, fuck, this is like a nerf. I mean, I can't, it's like pushing a string. So the Zen approach is to be the string, right? Be water. This is the, uh, the Bruce uh, Lee quote. Be like water. I mean, I've done enough martial arts to know that, or just play dead, like possum. Like, uh, I had a possum in my house uh, last couple of years ago, and I'm like, they really do play dead, this fucker. I think it was actually got blood on him. He was really, he was playing possum for a reason. And uh, so, you know, this ability, and this is where the people say, well, he's a very patient traitor. He's been down, he's down 1,500, but he's up about 25. Yeah, sure. And this guy here, um, Forks Hangout guy, he always says, I wish I could be in the trade longer. But, um, so holding a loss is as hard as holding a win. In fact, winning or losing has kind of, silly enough, nothing to do with trading because it's an activity that does make money, like, it's like deciding to open a store next to this this Starbucks that's doing this fucking insane brew and being like, okay, who's coming after Starbucks? Tim Horton? Who's coming? I mean, fuck. I mean, you know, what, in Seattle, downtown, some hipster thing. There's a bunch of people coming after Starbucks. Starbucks is considered to be, but it's funny because the Starbucks I went to, rich people live there, so it was designed to be like almost... I've never been in a Starbucks where you 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 got a thirty thousand uh, dollar uh, brewmeister there. Uh, I was like, wow, these people really—it's <laughs> not enough for them. Yeah, pff, we're not drinking Pike Street here, bitch. Uh, Whatever it's Pike, their Pike shit. I'm like, what the fuck is Pike, dude? I mean, really? Is this the Coca-Cola of Starbucks? I don't know. I guess I'm drinking Starbucks too much, but I got friends at Starbucks. Damn it, it's like Facebook for coffee. Um, anyways, going back to the trading thing. So, and how much is coffee? Like, I got, oh, <laughs> dude, coffee was three bucks. Five dollar coffee at Starbucks cost me a fucking 50 pip stop on a 1K. That's how I looked at it. I mean, that's how I still look at it. When I go to Starbucks, I go and say, dude, you just bought a fucking 8.8 .8 ounces of Jamaican blue to fucking 34 bucks. I could have put a fucking trade on for you. <laughs> Give me a you. Let me show you that chart. I mean, look at the... You trade the guppy, right? You fly with the big boys and trade the guppy, which is just fucking annoying as shit. I mean, yeah, you got to run a fucking... This is the thing. You trade the euro dollar. And as soon as you ship currencies... I mean, come on, man. It's just metrically mind-blowing. It's easier to build a system solely dedicated to one fucking currency. You know the thing with this poor Ryan Brown guy, dude? If it doesn't work on the euro, it doesn't work on the fucking planet. I'm sorry. That's the most liquidity fucking shit in the world. That's like saying, here, I'll give you a beer for a fucking beer, a bottle of wine. Right? <laughs> Come on. Europe and America on the same page. We don't want to blow up the fucking world. And, um, we're, we're the, you know, the Europe's, Europe's um, the European states, for God's sakes. Uh, the whole Brexit thing, you know. Uh, and the Brexit thing with this poor Ryan Brown. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ in heaven and in hell for the Satanists. Uh, God, man. It's just... And I'm, I'm not saying that uh, nobody thinks that way. Everybody thinks... Everybody has a part of them that is fucking absolutely... Uh, and this guy, uh, Forex Hangout guy, talks about it. I don't know if I'll run across this here, but... He talked about the uh, fact that we're not wired to trade. Fuck, no, you're not. You're wired. And this is the whole reason why it's so silly to see these people go, well, see, it's good. we're going to get here. We're going to go up. And actually creating legs into the future of like, well, dude, I'm not even telling you it's going up. It's going to go five wave off of fucking here into there. Okay, great. Dude, you will be a rock star if that trade works out. But you don't have to be a fucking rock star. You could be the guy behind the fuck. I mean, do you think, uh, um, oh God, the motherfucker that uh, produced the Beatles? Is it Martin? Is it George Martin? I don't know. Fuck, I can't remember now. I have Alzheimer's all of a sudden. Anyways, the guy that was the the guy that said, "Hey, put the fucking make this thing do that." You know, he was uh, the foreman. 
and he's the guy leading the orchestrating. He's his conductor. And so trading's uh, like an orchestra. You've got the high frequency traders, right? You got the violins, you got the fucking big monster fucking uh, timpani, the guys that position trade, they come in in fucking extremes. Or they get in before the thing gets fucking insane. Or yeah, this is not really. It's worse than conspiratorial thinking that the. Um, and this. Uh, at this guy that emailed say hey do you think they're manipulating the market well for of course they are there's there's men and men uh, yeah men are being they're handling people are handling money <laughs> all this all you're seeing is the is the fucking transactions you just happen to be able to see the transactions and when um look at bitcoin how can you explain the most if you go to the monthly and weekly charts it's the most perfect example of uh, crowd behavior that ever probably the cleanest I've seen okay, you would see these first moves on every penny stocks did this shit they don't, I could take it any chart on the planet you can't tell whether it's forex or I could show you a corn chart you'd be like dude this looks like the fucking euro dollar last week yeah of course give me a fucking break um it's you're looking at a vibration. Um, market gets quiet, goes up, down, up, down, up, down, psh, tapers down, explodes. And why is it marching into this shit? And this guy, the Forex Hangout guy, he's on the five minute chart. He's got so much zigzags on there. To me, <sighs> I just couldn't imagine doing what he's doing, but he's doing it. And he could probably make his money back because he's not trading the big size anymore. He can afford to be wrong. He can afford to be wrong. And what I'm saying is that not only can I afford to be wrong, but I can afford to be wrong on levels of volatility that are cross stratification of risk. I can handle more punishment. And I can make money from, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going up right fucking now. Like, I have a, we're going to go up fucking right now. I have market orders. I do have them. Uh, but I'd say if I looked at my wins and I would have done a spreadsheet, but I'm going to say, and hopefully I'm not distorting uh, reality, um, but I'd say the pending orders, uh, I'm not, the stop orders, eh, those are confirmation entries, which really suck. But I've been giving my stop order entries a, a softer. I used to have very hard. Of course, this is another problem. As you design the platform to the market conditions that you can get to the platform every hour and pull a trigger for this and that and drop. And every hour, don't forget, every hour you could drop a 15, a 30, a one hour, four hour. It's a bottomless fucking pit of pattern capture I'd call, or I call them, I call them spike strips I mean I'm saying we're I want to retain at least 60 percent of that position if I can and maybe get stopped out of 40 percent of those tickets or hopefully only 20 percent the trick is to realize that the fucking market's going to go up 50 pips or down 50 pips and there's not there's it's it's one or the other it's very binary it's it's just one or the other man do you have a trade plan for a if the market's up 50 pips tonight, would you sell into Asia? And you can't tell me. You can't tell me. Well, let's look at the chart. Do you really? You don't if you're a risk manager. Because you would just say, okay, how much are we going to spend on that idea? And are you going to pull the trigger every hour? Because just put one of those on. And how long is it going to last? How long are you going to expose yourself to this one idea? I don't know if you can imagine... The complexity, once you put in, um, now I'm just speaking symmetrically. Imagine you're always putting in two orders. One is going to be 20 pips, 28 pips north, a sell limit, 28 pips deep, a buy limit. Do they last for 15 minutes or do they last for eight hours? Maybe you have a, a 30 minute and a four hour and an eight hour. And you run that all day long. And you're like, I'm not getting filled on this shit. 
Yeah, you're too fucking far away from the market. Based on the current last price pulse, based on some fucking clue of the monthly. The monthly range. Now, this ICT talks about it. Well, look at the weekly range, and then I trade in between it. Okay, great. But, dude, you're not trading enough orders. What you're doing is, what most people are doing, in my opinion, is they are fucking lazy. And they're saying, oh, I'm just going to be, I can handle being down. Uh, well, okay, great. But they don't need the money that bad. They got a million dollars. Fuck, I know a guy that's got a million dollars and he's like, dude, I'm down like fucking 38 grand tonight. But he, if he's going to be down, some guy, if some guy said, ah, I'm down 1,500 bucks, it's no big deal. I mean, I've made four grand off these swings before and yeah. But when do they tap out? I think it's a whole different thing psychologically of, Picking a stop up front, accepting the risk up front with a stop. Or, and I'm not that guy, if I'm in without a stop, I'm like, that accounts to stop now, bitch, because I'm that stubborn and I am that pissed off about not being right. Because I'm fucking smart enough. And this is also another thing that Bill Williams says, the smarter you are, the harder to make money. Fuck yes, because now you got a fucking opinion which I have a severe opinion on a lot of shit. So a very severe trader. And so how do the scripts help me not blow up the account? Well, if that order lasts for 15 minutes, I'm saying I've got to work at hitting this fucker to keep myself actively participating in a possible fill over the next 15 minutes, which is very, uh, I'm trading. Imagine I'm flat. I'm not, I have no positions open. I constantly trolling the market with orders, and I've got the scripts, got them all written. And as the account grows, trade those scripts. Later on, you can experiment, but find something that fucking is so stupid. And now you can run ratios of four to one, and three to one, and five to one, and this also presupposes you let the whole fucking trade play out, which this forex hangout guy isn't he wants to do it and if he did it he'd want to do it more and then he'd reach a crust of the profitability and he'd back off and go no you know it was better before i think we all distort the outcome of that trade going oh if i would have stayed in that trade but i don't think for me i get very fatigued with being in any kind of drawdown like a very greedy uh when i see the mark when i see my account up I go, you know, it's it's the end of the day. Just get the fuck out, dude. There's going to be insanity in London Open. Um, yeah, I'm kind of falling in love with this trade. Now, this is the problem. <sighs> Why are you falling in love with the trade? Because it's 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 giving you a good fuck. You know, you're you're winning, and the market likes you. It, it agrees with you. Like, yeah, I'm bullish. Thanks for fucking me to the north. And who's not fall, who's not affected by uh, making money? And losing is also has a bad connotation because a loser, in other words, you could be the hottest motherfucker in the world. Like you could look like GQ dude or you could look at fucking Mademoiselle hot. I don't know if that's hot, but uh, a lot of makeup on these chicks. But um, I guess the counterpart would be a guy in a, in a band right where's makeup so good looking people um and uh but then of course this is the old joke i suppose that person's really good looking not a joke but you kind of figure well if they're really good looking then eh, maybe they're not too smart like maybe they gave something up there but there are people that are good looking and smart and of course the people that um, but I'm getting I'm getting off topic, but not really. What I was trying to say is that life's complex, and so we we design filters to deal with reality. And this is the invention of moving averages because you know what I don't have to worry about the trend. I don't have to worry about being responsible for every five minutes of the market that I'm in the market. Uh, I do think these are crutches. Um, you know, I can show, I could cherry pick a chart, which is called cherry picking an oscillator. When that, the, or the moving average, 
In other words, the inflection of, say, an 18 and a half period moving average. Let's pick a, let's, let's dial it in even more, right? If moving averages work, why wouldn't a tenth of a moving average work? Well, I'm using a 19.2 moving average. Actually, I'm using a, uh, yeah, go Fibonacci, right? I'm using the 1.4, um, 1.68. You mean your moving average is, it's one, but you put a 618 on it? Yeah, because a two-period moving average is too fucking slow. So, right? So why not do that moving average? And then compare that to the one-period moving average. And when the one-period when the one-period moving average crosses the one six eight moving average, one point six eight moving average, go long. It's a fucking beautiful trade, right? Because it's just a it's just a a little bit. It's starting to go. You are in. When the candle closes, or fuck the candle, well, this is what Akinashi's built on. Once we break a threshold of engagement, we jump on the fucking train. Are we, we want to be in before that fucker leaves the station. Any Akinashi system, you don't want to get in when it's roaring, unless you're running a wide stop, unless you don't mind chasing. But there's a whole different mentality, in my opinion, to get on a fucking train that's left the station. It's one thing if it leaves. Now, trains will leave. They start off because they weigh so fucking much. And you notice that when the market is really dense and it's weighted with all that volume, there's so many people on the fucking train. But in this scenario, the train can either go forward or backwards. And it's funny when you look at the trains, you'll see the engine that has... It's like... Or when you see that kind of odd, like, dogs getting engaged where the trains are backed up against each other and the the engines are on each lobe right kind of like breast you know it's binary it's, peterson talks about that which jordan peterson he's fucking ridiculous he talks about well see there's there's a, yeah dude this is like pattern recognition it's terrible right uh so we're pattern orientated i'm looking for the most gorgeous woman that i could hold a conversation with and uh um, crack jokes, right? I guess humor to me, like if I had somebody that I could crack jokes with all day long, I'd say, holy shit, look for another day of cracking jokes and just being the most sarcastic motherfuckers on the planet. So I had a friend like that. Um, and it was a lot of fun because what can we just be ridiculous about today? And, uh, so I love being ridiculous and the market's ridiculous. So I guess maybe that's the attraction. But for the guy that's saying, well, um, how can I integrate uh, making money in the market into my lifestyle? You know, this is, this is tough because if you make, uh, say you make $300 a day at your day job and you're like, yeah, it's not bad, you know, but I'd like to, I'd like to get my feet wet in the market at any point in your life. It wouldn't matter whether you're a beginner trader or you're, um, Always trading, because there's trades that you go, Jesus, man, if I only had the patience to be in a trade for like fucking five days, look at this motherfucker retrace. And of course, the discipline would be not to go to the fucking four-hour chart. If you if you entered on the daily going, oh, yeah, I, I'm ready for 100. Dude, we're coming in the zone here. I'm not going to drop to the five-minute chart like a fucking idiot, these goddamn cunts over uh, empowered trading. I'm, really? This is like saying to a guy, look at um, you're at the bar for three hours. Dude, you're not getting married. You're just trying to flirt with some girl. Maybe you bang her in the car, bring her back on the bar. Um, you got to scalp this chick. It, you're on the five-minute chart. Dude, if you're in a, a bar for two and a half hours, you're on the five-minute. What have you done in the last 15 minutes to get laid, right? Um, or have a beer with some chick and spill it down her blouse and go, I, I brought the paper towel on this date. I am so ready to mop this up for you. You have to be ready to go and have the paper towel in hand, paper towel folded into your pants, ready for, for that procedure, right? That's the scenario you're planning for. Or you've got all week, you own the bar. Now, if you own the bar, you're a position trader, and you're like, dude, I'm just waiting for that one chick to come in here, man. I got fucking, I'm just waiting for this one girl. Um, 
and you own the bar and you're that guy and you have clout. Now, you don't have any clout in the market. And the thing is, is the market doesn't know you exist, which is really terrible if you're a people person and you like to try to manipulate people, that manipulation. But I think people feel like if they're being manipulated, that's a bad thing. But I'd like to be manipulated by a hot girl. So if she, uh, uh, well, she could woman it will manipulate me but that's um you know uh so these things were all in our head and uh while we're trading we unless we're going to be spock or you know uh, data or an android we're not going to be able to divorce ourselves from the fact that um the pace of the market in asia is so i know this guy i don't know if he still listens He's an Asian guy in, in Australia, and he says, I trade Asian market. Well, of course, um, because uh, he doesn't want all that crazy volatility. It's very, actually, if you don't mind the spread, and if you trade on a good broker, you trade Asia. Uh, because you're not going to see crazy shit unless something really bad really does happen. But the markets aren't open, so there's not much exposure. You're really trading this. Um, the patterns are the same. The behavior is the same. And maybe you maybe you do hold, uh, say you trade an Asian breakout. Asian breakout system. I should do an ad like that, like these goobers do with the London breakout system. Dude, that's fucking not even right to say, the London breakout. Dude, it's more like the Asian breakout. You want to be long into the Europe open, and then maybe you reverse you want to be short into London Open. Come on, the best fucking trades in the world are coming out of Asia. I'm not coming out of the, I mean, they're coming out of Asian behavior. All these Zen fuckers jump on board. I mean, what is going on? You know, I used to be in such big positions thinking, what is going on with these people? Somebody fucking trade the goddamn market already. Like, what the fuck? Don't these people even... Aren't they awake? And they're supposed to be awake now trading. These, these We're expecting these Australians and shit to pick up the ball. This is why the spread sucks out of New Zealand. Dude, where are these fuckers? Send those fuckers some Starbucks. Get them fucking on the trade desk. Like, dude, really? You mean the only fucking activity I see is coming at 6.30? It, it is just before U.S. opens, you see people dumping shit and... and uh, blowing out positions coming you know big volatility come in a big tidal wave fucking order banks um let's see it on the chart stupid shit look at the one hour chart one hour chart holy shit there's 24 hours in a day who doesn't know this shit but we all want to put our fucking spin on what we see well look at this here this looks like a fucking dragon's tooth against five piping pipers Okay, and your point is, well, based on the fundamentals of the Brexit and the fact that I want to risk 1% of my account, I'd say I'd like to do maybe, on this one trade, I'll risk $36. That's actually, I don't know, it's going to be a big position, right? Well, yeah, I want to get like an 8K going or something like that. I don't know, I just want to get my feet wet. No, get some skin in the game. So... Right, this is, I should do like a, I know you know who Phil Henry is, but I was thinking about doing a Phil Henry, but Phil Henry's a guy that calls himself up on the phone and it does interviews himself. It's pretty funny. I guess you can see through it, but if you really let the, uh, what do they say, the uh, imagination take over, it sounds, it's fucking hilarious. But, so we have the uh, guy that's, He's thought about the risk, and he says, you know, I, uh, I do think that we're going to, um, I like, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I want to risk 1.5% per trade. We'll do one trade a day. Then you have another guy step up to play go, no, you know what, I think I want to risk 3% every day. Now, who's the better, who has the better scheme? Well, it doesn't mean anything right now because you haven't plugged in the size of, in other words, how much in real dollars it's going to cost. Because if one guy has a $10,000 account, 3% of a $10,000 is different than the guy that has the 
hundred dollar account who's bare, he's risking one and a half percent. I mean, dollar wise, that's insanely different. So this is like the difference between moving into a hotel and calling it your home and moving to a fucking 500 square foot bungalow and calling it your home. So two completely different things and everything in between, in between everything to a, a commercial building. That's like mind boggling. You're like, really? That's your house. <laughs> Fuck yeah, fuck Bill Gates. That's my house right there. That fucking goddamn skyscraper. Trump Tower, right? I think he's running it out. So, that's what the market is to me. It's a whole fucking continuum from a fixer-upper of like a half a million to a fixer-upper of whatever. $40 million building, you know, some other fucking... I don't know how much the World Trade Center's uh, cost. Nobody talks about that. Hey, dude, we just lost fucking... Look at that shit. We just took that pill. Um, yeah, so... My point is... That... This poor Ryan Brown guy. Dude, your wife's too hot. Get rid of her. Um, make some money. Of course, that's not going to help either. But this idea that... Um... The news is driving the market. If I only knew what the news was doing, I got a signal service. I say, watch this thing and that thing. And oh, so I'm in the Discord thing. So somebody just messaged in here. Let me see. Um, we got news coming in here. So I'm at this Forex uh, Hangout uh, Discord channel. This guy posts the link down here. So I got in here. And I don't know. I was cracking some jokes about Ryan Brown. And uh, that was when I first came in here. But I guess I'm pretty, I'm a, I'm a really uh, inappropriate person most of the time, I think. Especially on YouTube and especially, well, I guess in, in if, uh, if you're willing to get sarcastic with me, I can go there. So it says here, um... Oh, about the petrodollar. So, sorry, I get back. China, so this is how news headlines are just uh, really ridiculous. To try to make a trade plan on this shit. China is days away from killing the petrodollar. Oh, my God. Holy shit. As, the, as crude oil goes up, right? So it's making crude oil go up? I guess so. Jed says it's because of the petrodollar. I don't know. I shrug my shoulders. <laughs> A full-blown economic war. Full-blown? Holy shit. Like my account? Um, you could also blow it up and make a bunch of money. My tequila buddy used to do that all the time. Dude, I just made like $8,000. The next day I talked to him, he goes, Dude, I added 4000 I was down 60000 by morning. Yeah, because the market just like when... It just moves. It just moves. If you're in too big on the wrong side, you'll know. You'll know that feeling. Uh, if, if if you have a feeling about it, if you don't, I guess that's the ideal thing. You're like, yeah, I can see that coming. U.S. and China is likely. Okay, so not only a full-blown economic war between U.S. and China, but it's likely. But the U.S. understand underestimates China. Holy shit. It's like uh, what holy filter fight. I guess people fall for this shit. This has nothing to do with making money. This fucking fundamental news is fucking absolutely stupid. Um, look at some guys posting in here in the Discord. This stuff is not good for you to think about. This is not the way to think about trading. I, I get that this is entertaining. This guy's got global... Um, and I've talked to this guy. I know this guy. Global markets. And no offense to him. Oil. Global commodity markets. Oil is billions of U.S. dollars. We trade a lot of oil. I don't know. And then there's gold. Well, of course, oil is the lubricant, man. This is how you come up with these gels you can just bang all night with. Um, the silver is the smallest slice. Nickel, lead. Lead's up there. Zinc. Aluminum's pretty substantial. Copper. But, yeah, oil, I don't know. Um, it's, it's, they go through a lot of oil, so the, the chart's a little deceiving. 
This creates a huge artificial market for U.S. dollars. Eh, whatever. They're all artificial, I guess, if you're a purist. I'm calling this the new mechanism China's golden alternative to the petrodollar. It goes live on March. The gold alternative. Well, yeah, bitcoins. You know, whatever. Dude, you're still driving a car. How about this Uber thing? I haven't been on the news, but driving in, I heard about the Uber um, fiasco. One car ran over. Really took that long for one of these fucking robots to take out a person? Of course, so maybe people are going to do this new thing. Jump in front of a fucking Uber thing and barely get hurt and then claim the insurance. It's good for the poor people now that do that. Um, so this guy says, this guy's name is, uh, I want to say McClan. Why the petrodollar, why the dollar is different than the peso. Um, so these are really, like I said, this is not a, you know, no, no offense to anybody that posts stuff in here. But I think it's, you know, people comic relief. Uh, trading is lonely. But actually, you know, I, I think lonely traders win in a way if you have discipline to... Um, so this is why it's, it's not always a good idea to broadcast your ideas like this Ryan Brown is doing because now you feel like maybe not stubborn, but you have to follow through because I said I'm going to do this. I don't want to be wishy-washy. You know, um, I don't want to realize that, uh, well, this is harder than it looks. Um, so if you got some paint, let's say you bought just black ink and decided you were going to do some drawings, you're probably better off, right? This is like trading one currency pair. If you used to bring color into the situation, holy shit. And this is when people are trading 26 pairs. It's like doing... Um, color development with film you'd have to have the temperatures perfect with black and white you could be a complete fuck up and you can also get nice special effects out of black and white because it's binary like i say texting is binary from the standpoint of there's no inflection yeah i know books are written but um, the reason why people like the books is that they are um the books are your imagination is reading into it so you're making it your own through what you've already known. And some people go read a book and go, it sucks. But when I read Atlas Shrugged, I only got about 80 pages into it. I gave up. But I got it, right? Because I saw the fractal. The hologram is in there. It's all embedded in there. And uh, so you can see where what she's aiming at. In the first, you know... 10 pages the style of the approach to and it's all if you really pick it apart like people pick apart which I love these Stanley Kubrick movies people take 2001 and they go oh dude see right there he's talking about like future conspiracies like dude okay you just gotta step away from the fucking um, you gotta like well people would accuse me get a life but I do it pretty deeply in the trading so I guess right people can make the same claim that you know, hey, let it go. It's going to be okay. It's, don't worry about the 18-pip stop as opposed to the 14-pip stop. I mean, you know. But, of course, all this attention to detail is what creates artwork. Unless you're going to come from this where I just put a red dot on the page and it was like, so because I'm this guy and I've decided this is a cool painting. It looks like a goddamn Japanese flag. It's going for fucking a million dollars over the Louvre. Okay, I got it. But, dude, this is why... It doesn't even matter, right? Um, all the stuff that uh, people worry about in a way. And of course, if you're trading to make money so that you can get a nicer car, or so you can get a hotter babe or dude, you know, whatever you're... Uh, or yeah, maybe you want a better robot to bang you. I mean, that's coming, right? Let's face it. That's not... I mean, <clears throat> that's a, actually interco intercontinental sex. I mean, uh, sex on the computer. That's that's coming. I've been told by a fiber installer that's coming. So this stuff's on the horizon. I'm going to take a sip because this Forex Hangout guy is eating a fucking meal. I'm going to take a sip. I'm going to treat this like a live stream. I'm drinking this goddamn...
clover shit. Um, it's holding up. I usually can nurse a goddamn Starbucks. I feel like a sippy cup. I feel like a kid that, <clears throat> so immature, such an immature, fucking angry, resentful, impatient person that so I just feel like a little coffee addict, really. <clears throat> In fact, the real... Uh, so I gave my friend some high-end coffee. And he said, I don't know. I don't think I like it. And I said, dude, you brought it too strong. <laughs> it's so good that it's like you wouldn't... <clears throat> you know, you, unless you're... It's like... I think that the... Um, the coffee that... Uh, he was using Tim Hortons... If you like the flavor of that coffee and you like it brewed at a certain density level and you like it like that, anything else is going to seem like, well, this is too strong or this is too weak. Or it's down the middle or it's too, it's too edgy. That's why breakfast blend, the idea there is you take a bunch of beans and the reason why they're doing this with red wines now, you know, maybe they're not. I just started drinking red wine Uh I guess about a year ago, so or going back into it, I was a kid, I was drinking the wine, I was a wine kind of sewer, I guess. But I see these red blends, they're like, oh yeah, how can you fuck this wine up? We just take a little of this, a little of that. Got the greatest hits, right? I mean, if if a band has at least ten hits, well, they'd be around for a long time. Well, you could be a one hit wonder, and in trading you could be a one hit wonder. Oh yeah, sometimes I kill it, you know, I'm making some fucking serious and sometimes I'm like, oh geez, you know. So you can get beat up in a place, and this is why people say, you're trading against the best traders in the world. No, you're not. They don't even know you exist, dude. How can you be trading against them? Or how can they be trading against you? They couldn't be. You're in a pool that is so fucking big. If I splash around my feet in the ocean, and you're in Italy, are you going to feel it? probably more than the market's going to feel your trade or even your thought. It seems like the market's going, the idea that the market's going against you only because you chose to dip your foot in the pool and the direction's always changing. So if you're okay with, and this guy, Forex Hangout guy's okay with jumping in the market, I don't think I've ever seen him enter on a limit or a stop. I think he just goes, boom, I'm in. And, uh, you know, if you're like, hey, Stochastics is overbought, let's, let's sell one. Now, that's always been a big problem for me, and that's why uh, Forex to me was the only way to trade. Some guy, uh, I made a comment, some guy said that uh, Forex, he made it inside of uh, this video here. <clears throat> you know, Forex is... Um, in the long run, everybody's going to lose. Yeah, I think so. If you have a rigid uh, view, <clears throat> a rigid plan for life, like, no, it's got to be this way or I quit, you're not going to be able to survive because the terrain's changing and you're changing. You're getting older. The sutures in your bone and your skull are emerging. You're getting, um, eh, you could work out, I suppose, to your dad and, some point you're going to die. Um, so you're either going to be go with your DNA and ride that. Uh, this is a very modern world, so it's very unhealthy. <clears throat> so people are not doing a bunch of physical activity they don't have to do anymore. You know, they're pretty much um, able to. Uh, I wish somebody would have told me my pocket was out in my back. It looked like it, like I was flagging somebody. I just realized my pocket's so stitched here. So, yeah. Um, so the, the trading thing is really difficult because I used to think in the morning, I'm like, oh, yeah, this morning shit, I'm going to trade this. And if you're impatient, <clears throat> you combine that with needing to be in the market, you're going to distort time. I'm going to distort time. And so, you know what? God, I want to get in this thing. It's going up. Fuck these cunts. We're near the bottom. That's probably going lower. You know, obviously. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, fuck it. Uh, <clears throat> I'll buy a one at the market. Uh, so my worst entry would be... I go for the worst entry first. Get that out of the way. Highest risk trade in pip. In pips, not in dollars. Give me a... Let's buy, let's buy a 1K here with a 50 pip stop. Because I just want to get rid of this anxiety that... Fuck, we're close to the bottom here. Fuck these assholes. This, uh, this is my thought. I'm just to tell you what I'm thinking in the morning. If I say I want to be a buy, well, I'm buying dips, right? Fuck these assholes. And then I'll be like, you know what? Instead of buying at the market, fuck them. I'm going to buy five hips deep with a 30 hip stop. And I like to, I like to have the market come into me this is a crash into me this is the another uh, a classic uh, song where the lyrics m meet up to the market for me is a Dave Matthews crash into me and of course it, it fulfills a romantic card so yeah okay I'll take a little bit of that and uh, then I say okay I could get in Fibonacci got Fibonacci script I think I wrote I'll buy 5, 8, 13 21, 34, 55 I'll buy all those pip handles for the next eh, 4 hours, fuck them fuck those fuckers yeah I'm just sorry but this is this is uh, where it gets inappropriate and these are great trades because I'm telling you if you have conviction and you have no fear of... In fact, I actually very big on brinksmanship. That's why I like to argue with all these, these fuckers that tell me I'm trading a demo. Okay, if I, t if I gave you the blueprints to a building, would you tell me, well, the building's not built, so this is bullshit. And then I build a model of the building, and you go, it's bullshit. Build the building. Okay, well, if I build the building on the in the wrong place, <clears throat> in the wrong place on the planet, then um, then what? Right, in the wrong time. Then what? What if I build ten buildings on that same blueprint? What's more feasible? I'm talking about feasibility. Anybody can make money trading, dude. Anybody can make it. They don't even have to know that they're, why they're making it. I mean, they don't even have to know anything about anything. So that's, that's not... I'm not sure... Like, uh, uh, so if somebody says, well, I'm full of shit because um, I'm trading a demo. I don't know what it's like to lose money and win money. I think I... Trust me. I've... Won and lost thousands of dollars. And it's a choice, almost like an alcoholic every day, to decide, am I going to be a winning trader today? Um, when Mark Douglas said, not trading is money in the bank. That I didn't like the, I didn't like, I don't like it when people say that. Because the part of me that, knows for a fact that if I don't have my money working for me in some amount that I feel absolutely no hope. So this this Ryan Brown having, oh, he hopes the trade works out, that's great for small positions. And you have to take care of that hope side of you because he's a hopeful guy. Um, he's a nice guy, right? Being a nice guy doesn't matter because you could be a nice guy and make money and be an asshole and make money. It would just be this thing about the, you know, how do you want to make your money? And are you okay making money from randomness? Up or down? And being good at timing the randomness. In other words, say you're counting on random behavior and how thick... What is this, um, the size of the fractal of the randomness? 
is it an 8.9 pip vibration or is it a 22 and a half pip um, or 22 and a quarter and actually they'll let you do 22 and 9 tenths in these markets like the gas pump bullshit you're pulling up there they still get the fucking nine tenths of a penny on the end of that shit I guess that's why people are going to be selling stuff for not 90 cents but it's 99 cents oh R Harry did you see this shit it's, it's under a dollar <laughs> um, and the penny thing holy shit I guess we're holding the price of zinc up Anyways, I'm going to go into this tape here. Like I said, I'll probably be just ranting all night, so... You're welcome to stop the tapes. This is not a stream. Can we just come back later when you feel the need? I'm not selling anything. Um, other than my insanity. No, my, ins my rants are free. <laughs> um... <clears throat> of course, the other problem is is that people that are as pissed off as me are attracted to my channel, and then I see how angry I am, and I think, man, you got to fucking calm down. Um, but I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a grumpy old man. Um, only because, well, I guess <sighs> depends where you're at, right? If you're watching television. Or if you don't watch television for a while, I come back to watching, you're like, holy shit. Are these people kidding? But you got to realize they're selling advertising. So the show, Fox TV has hotter checks, obviously. I watched ABC this morning. I'm like, really? These are like... And then watching ABC News this morning, and these two girls have on, like, I'm not even kidding. Imagine a dress that's black on the bottom and blue on top, and the demarcation line between these two colors is at a fucking angle. The other chick has a red version of that, and the angle's going the other way. So it's like forward slash backslash. I don't know if you saw this. It's like this morning, 24th of March, 2018. And I'm like, are they kidding? Like, did the producer not say, wait a minute, I know you guys picked out your own clothes, but no, they have people dressing them backstage, right? Actually, if you put it together, it looked like the fucking uh, asshole that designed the grill of the Lexus. If you like the grill of the Lexus with the big fucking inverted shit grill on the Lexus, this is a car. Um, I'm sorry for you, man. That's a fucking dumbass. Looks like a goddamn vacuum cleaner. Well, it's sucking on the air. No, it's not. It's most truncated. I mean, really? That is a fucking... And if it is, just... Dude, design it like an old car. I don't know. It's just like, it's wrong. Well, we can't have the same designs. Up. Why not? Leave it a fucking alone. It was fine. You fucked it up. It'd be like if the Stratocaster... Well, this year the Stratocaster is going to have a couple more fairings on it. What? Dude, it's not a fucking Les Paul if you're going to keep fucking with the contour, the cutout, the cutaway. Stop it. Call yourself the watered-down um, version of that. At least Mercedes still has a cool car. Big fucking Mercedes triangle in the front. Emblem. So, yeah. Uh, and I don't like this. Uh, so my friend has a 120... Or 240 megahertz playback TV. I don't like it. Give me fucking 60 frames, 60 uh, vibrations, because everything's so smooth it looks like a fucking soap opera, like this film that videotape. I can't. I don't. I don't even believe it's a real fucking show I'm watching. These new TVs are fucked up. What do they do to this shit? Like it's, it's all smoothed out, smooth playback. I go, fuck, Jesus Christ, it's fake looking. I don't know, maybe the only one on that camp, but I guess I want to hear some static on a radio. I'm just, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Smooth playback. Fuck that shit. Give me a goddamn black and white TV with static when I hit it. Have some fun, man. 
Everything's so clinical. These fucking apps. I mean, the only fun thing is watching them crash now and then. Now, soon that'll be gone. Right, and the stuff will just be... Um, uh, crash proof. Well, that'd be boring. I, always wanted, I got my Linux running on my fucking 8 gigabit gigabyte strip now so I can walk up to any computer and boot into Linux well of course I have to set the BIOS to boot to it turn off the fucking hit F2 or uh, F3, F10 on boot get in that BIOS and yeah just let me live in the BIOS in fact I want a screen up here with just the BIOS running all fucking day make me feel like safe see the motherboard version I think I actually copped wood the first time I saw I had an Asus motherboard, a bunch of fucking gigger. I bought the fucking Mushkin's uh, memory. I had the high-end memory on there. It's like fucking $100 a stick. Four gig. It just felt good. So the feeling of being in the market, of being in like, oh, look, I got a new fucking, yeah, I got a car. I got a Lexus piece of shit. I park in my fucking mansion. God damn fucking car. Um... I don't know. So I'm going to play this guy. This guy's cracking me up. Talking about the Ryan Brown issue. So I'm going to I'm gonna comment on top of his comments. Hopefully he's going to be as loud as me because I got a little, a little loud there earlier. I'm trying to calm down. I'll be okay. Another thing I want to say here. He has not said anything. I mean, I love this guy to death, but he's so calm. Look at the patience. He's just explicit. He's a, look, he just not said anything for like, I'm like, fuck, I can't shut the fuck up. Let's look at his ability. So we're totally different in the view of, uh, I think, anything. I think if, if I hung out with this guy all day, I think he wouldn't get a word in edgewise. He'd be sitting there going, mm -hmm. he'd just be nodding his head. Look, he still hasn't said anything. Look at that. And not, he still hasn't said anything. So when I'm streaming, if I'm not playing some background shit, I'm just... So, not that there's anything wrong with being patient. Because Oh, there he goes. He's Because. Okay. So it's, we're talking about risk here. Really what I wanted to do is I wanted to, to reduce my losses, reduce my risk, which which I'm doing. Get my game, my average wins up. That should create that larger gap. And so far, I'm seeing good signs. When I get about 500 or 600 trades here, then I think I can be a little bit more definitive about it. You know, about 10 times more trades. See, now, he he could do those trades. Of course, he is in the United States, so he's a little limited, but it doesn't mean you couldn't um, have a whole script array play out. You aren't going to be locked. If you're going to do 500 trades, now, I don't know, of course, the period of time that is, but you can do about, I'd say, 50 trades a day. And depending how you sized them, right, um... You could probably, the sizing would matter, right? So that right there, that metric matters so much. And, um, but he's doing what he's used to doing. So we all have to have a baseline that we can come back to and go, you know what? If I just go back to fucking only the pulling the trigger. Now this would be a, a proven, I can, you don't have to back test this. If you wait an hour to pull the trigger, Every hour, you would risk a 10 pip stop every hour on the one-hour chart of one currency. And we'll just pick the euro because it's just like the easiest thing to fucking do, right? Because it's tight as spread. I mean, it's gonna, you're going to be able to run an 8 pip stop. And you went through a whole day. And we're not even talking about whether this make 20 pips or 40 pips or anything like that. But you'd know your risk of ruin if you pull the trigger... Every uh, hour with an APIP stop um, in one direction. Say you're just selling or something. And uh, 
you know that 24 times 8, whatever that money, if, if they stopped you out every fucking hour, which is probably not likely unless the market's totally going against you constantly, that is your total loss for the day. Problem solved. Running this robot every week, every day of every week, can it be wrong every fucking hour for the APIP stop over the period of how many, what is it, 24 times 5? I don't know what that number is, but somebody probably does. Some responsible person, like 96 plus 24, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, um, that that that's a known that's a known quantity. Don't have to back test that. Then people say, "Well, is it good to buy every hour or sell every hour?" It depends what the. Uh, you're probably gonna wait for. A bar that's maybe 12 pips. So, when we get a 12 pip bar, if the last hour was tw in 12 pips from top to bottom in the bar, wick to wick, uh, pull the trigger on an 8 pip stop in the direction you may think it's going, or put on hedge. Now, if you go for the hedge, you probably have to increase your ratios because you're gonna might get stopped out of one leg and definitely by the market, you're gonna lose a leg. If you engage at the market with an 8 pip stop. In a, in a pure hedge with a pure ratio on the way out, not biased up or down, you're guaranteed to lose one of those legs. And both if the market never hits target, if it takes off in one direction or it can come back and it could just chop you, you're down 16 pips. How often do you pull the trigger every five minutes on that trade? Or every 14 and a half minutes? So, there is no fucking way that, uh, occur well, there's a fucking way. You'd say if I pull it every 15 minutes, I'm going to put on 96 trades a day with a 13 pip stop. And this guy's talking about 500 trades. And he's trading big, right? He's trading big. He's trading like standard lot or something. And, um,. But like I said, it always comes down to dollar risk because if you're down like a cup of coffee, it's, well, coffee, or a high-end cup of coffee, $5 cup of coffee, it's completely different than being down like a small, um, you know, uh, inflatable doll, like a, you know, the real doll, $10,000 real doll. You're down $10,000, you could have bought a real doll and had a friend for the night. So that that and of course that's gonna um, put you on a different emotional level. If uh, you've never risked that much money per hour or per five minute period, whatever the interval is, so that all matters, right? And um, so that that being said, as they say, um, or without regard to that, that matters and stuff. But it's it's funny because I think the trading the market's a test of when Mark, Mark Douglas says it's a mental toughness thing. And how can you be okay with being down like this? In you know the funny thing is Ryan Brown trade. He's shorting the pound CAD or the CAD pound. I brought it up the chart here. And if he holds on that trade for nine months, he might be a fucking genius. And uh, so it's just that, you know, I think he missed that vacuum fill on the uh, monthly. It was breaking up just like that fucking triple, that double bottom on the monthly euro. And those trades don't come very often. It takes fucking five years to form that, 10 years to form these patterns. But when it when the when it all comes together there and you're like oh yeah no we're gonna rip the other way for a while and uh, no just keep going there'll be plenty of places to counter trend trade it but maybe that's gonna be on the one hour chart so if you go from the one hour chart to the daily chart you're gonna see a huge contrast you're gonna see a double bottom on the on one hour chart and you're gonna there's nothing on the daily you're in the middle of a doji. Your daily doji is built out of a triple bottom on the one hour. If you've done any zooming in and out of these markets, 
You may see a double bottom on the hourly. It was a four hour doji. There's a typical setup. And then if you're looking at the looking at the last price pulse, which is the trend, big move up, pulls back, you're in an uptrend. Big move down, pulls back up, drifts back up, you're in a downtrend. As soon as the market tugs, it, it's going to trigger all these moving averages from the 1.6 moving average all the way to the fucking 3, to the 5, to the 8, to the 13, to the 21 EMA, the 20 EMA, 20 weighted, the 20 simple, the 20 smooth, the 20 up your ass. All that shit will finally kick in. And does that mean anything? Fuck no. It means you fucking missed the... I mean... <laughs> The contrarians are making all the money because they're range traders. They're out, not only that, they're, you can pick the bottom of the market. Or you let the bottom of the market pick you if you put your orders low. And so I'm saying pending orders are going to work just as well as breakout trades if you don't mind um, entering without knowing what's going to happen. A lot of people aren't okay. That's why he says he's not wired to thinking it's not okay. Everything you've ever learned your whole life is against how you would trade the market. So I'm not surprised people show up with uh, conventional thinking. But it's pretty dangerous in these fucking markets because, well, not dangerous, but, well, it could be dangerous. But you're also missing out on huge wins. Um, because you're not, you're not okay with um, seeing the other person's point of view. So nothing was... Uh, you could see what the other team's thinking, and maybe you should be on the other team, right? Like I said, this is hard, very hard for you to become a girl and then a boy and then a boy and the girl's this way. People do these sex changes. I'm like, I think you kind of are on the wrong side of the trade because I think you're built. You know, if you got a dick, do it. Okay, you know, unless it's a boating accident, keep your dick. You know, just just hang in there or let it let it hang. You'll be a fine. But I guess I'm old school, you know. Nothing wrong with editing your dick or, you know, uh, putting a mute, <laughs> hitting the mute button on it. But hey, you could become celibate, right? You could just, you could just be like asexual. You could get on that fucking uh, hell bop, right? Just deball yourself and go for hell bop. First move to California and then board the fucking uh, comet, right? The trail of the comet. So here's uh, this guy, Vantage says, no. I'm reading backwards. I should read from top to bottom, right? If it works well, you can manage money and generate extra income from less from from free fees without publishing or selling it. But only if it's worth the hustle. Yeah, of course. So it's a hustle, and. Uh, I right hear says, um, that's crazy. This guy says, it's, it's not the holy grail. Close to 90% maybe. I'm still testing. I don't know. Doji, <coughs> the holy grail maker. I think the doji's the holy grail though. The, the pattern of a dead market is always going to be a no-brainer trade. Um, hmm. this guy's asking about the, huh, I, I can't, I can't make heads or tails of what they're saying, because I'm going to go back to this one. The very, uh, uh, deliberate talking guy, it's very deliberate. But that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, you can't block, you can't block those people? He's not. Yeah, I don't have a block feature either. I wonder if YouTube changed their things. So, so YouTube is uh, saving. They must have bought some more gigabytes. There's terabytes. 
they're saving the comments is a real stream real life so he's going to answer people uh, piping in here which is fun I can only put people in timeout also that's odd oh boy so I'm going to try to talk between him oh. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with, with the trading. And I, I really feel comfortable with it. Um, I went through drawdown. I'm still in drawdown. I, I, I don't think I'll be in drawdown for very long. It, it just, it's, part, it's, part of, it's part of trading. It's a, it's a good lesson. I really think that in order to become a profitable trader, you have to learn to be able to trade through times like this. You just have to trade through it. And I think, I think, and and I don't mean to, I don't mean to pick on Ryan Brown, but I think, I think what he's doing may be a little bit wrong right now by, by stepping back. I think what he should just do is, is continue to trade his strategy. If he's, if Ryan is out there watching this afternoon. Because... He's got to. He's got to go plow his wife. This uh, Ryan Brown. I mean, he's got to. I mean, she's too hot. Because uh, you you'll never know. I mean, you're never going to know if your strategy is profitable in the long run. <coughs> I mean, it's built into Ryan's strategy to take thirty percent losses. We'll take the thirty percent losses and just continue to trade your strategy. Yeah, he's a psycho swing trader. I know that I'm going to take twenty percent if I trade on the risk percent, the risk risk reward. I draw down at start of the year. Seems great, and then you come home from work one day oh, and you get. To so here's here's very funny. It just so I'm a big fan of these metaphors. This is so funny what he says here. Forex Hangout guy is going to uh, describe what I feel is totally true about uh, getting kind of falling in love with a uh, indicator. Bear down and, and continue to trade. I, I really hope that now, I don't agree with the strategy, and I've said that publicly many, 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 many times. I, I think that there's a flaw in in his strategy. I think there are better ways to, to trade. Flaw? Um, Jesus. But he seems pretty persistent and married to this, to this, to this way of trading, this counter-trend trading. Um, for whatever reason, I, I mentioned in the Discord the other day that it's kind of like watching somebody in an abusive relationship. You know, you love this strategy so much that you go home to it every day, and it's just an awful, awful, awful situation. All right? They're nice to you for a little while, and everything seems great, and then you come home from work one day and you get the crap beat out of you. You know? And then you go to work and you get a little bit complacent and you you know you go off and everything gets a little peachy and everything's just fine and you forget about you forget about the bad times because you have all these little good times and then boom, right and i think i think that i mean i'm not trying to talk him well i would i would try to talk him out of this out of, out of counter trend trading if, I mean, the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing over and over and over and expect um, a different outcome. Um, I, I don't think it's the kind of trend trading because that does work. You really have to it's define the pip range. Counter trend trading is a high prob Selling strength and buying weakness uh, works great. If you know your, if you know the structure of the market, your target, uh, because when it does reverse, you're going to make so much fucking money. Especially your contrarian traders make a lot of money. Um, it's not Ryan Brown's problem. He's just oversizing 
And he's making the same mistake I think everybody's making is um, all the people I see selling courses and shit. It's not telling people they need to have a distribution of size and risk and uh, time exposure. Uh, so you need to have three things. It has to be a, a package deal of I risk every eight hours I have um, just like a real auction. So I have stuff for, say you were going to sell stuff on eBay. Well, you always have something on eBay. You always got something in the mix ready to sell. And that's your inventory. You always have a, a pending order out there. You've created your own auction. So placing a pending order, you are the banker. The idea that the bankers are coming after you is just so weak. No, you're your own banker. You got your own books. Keep your own books. You know what you got orders working. Right? You put an ad on the you put an ad on the internet you pay for, right? You turn on your Google ads. And people <clears throat> respond. You could turn it off, and that would be like just never placing a pending. So either you're going to buy a company that exists and say, okay, I'm going to buy right here, buy this company because I think it's in an uptrend. I hear that, you know, um, inflatable dolls are coming back. So I'm going to buy into this company that's making like these new neoprene ones that are really, you know, friendly. And so you buy in at the market. You get into that thing. Or what you do is you say, you know what? Let me know when you go to business. I'm going to buy your company from you. Call me when you guys capitulate into new lows, and I'll be there. In fact, I'll make you an offer that's so fucking low. When you get to that point, when you're done and you've caved, I'm in. Right? These Shark Tank guys. I'm in. I'm out. So you are you create your own destiny, you know. I, like I said, Ryan Brown, he just he's already arrived. He's got a hot wife. Came over. Who need to trade? Yeah. So ideally, you know, ideally I think he needs to change his strategy. But if he isn't going to change his strategy, it, 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 you, you've got to stick with it, right? I think what's failing his strategy. And sticking with it means designing your um, entries. If you're really going to be contrarian, you're waiting for that climax up or down and going, okay. Or you're not waiting for that climax. You can already see where it's going to fucking climax into. So if Ryan Brown would start selling into the vacuum, scaling into the vacuum, if you notice his trades aren't based on that, he's just like, oh, no. And, of course, he's got this stupid-ass fucking indicator he's probably using. Okay, well, it's time again because the indicator. Oh, my God. I mean, obviously, with a 500-bit stop in that size, and he was trading 40Ks with this one guy's account. Some fucking guy sent him money. Real money, the motherfucker's trading 40K every ticket. What the hell is that? I mean, you can't do that, man. <sighs> yeah, I guess you can. But you shouldn't. God, I mean, at least put odd lots in there. Maybe do a flat metric like I'm going to only risk $10 per trade, which means you can trade a um, you know, 10K with a with a 100 pip stop or 1,000 pip stop and a 1K. I mean, to find some number and then have this array out there so you can capture all the um, possibilities. And yeah, it's going to be work, but now with scripts, hell, you hit one button, it's going to lay a 20K in. Boom, 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 boom. They sit there for all fucking day, maybe. Dude, you're going to make money. If you risk $13 to make $21, you're going to make money on that trade. Sometimes. Can you handle, how many times can you handle being wrong? Well, I thought, well, this is like a good strategy. Dude, you're going to have to have fucking 20 strategies. There's no one strategy. 
Breakout traders are cleaning up in these fucking markets. The dumbest fucking trade. Well, what if they chop up? But well, because you put in fucking two tickets like an idiot. Fuck. You have to be sitting there going, "What if they stop me out and I still got um, fifty percent of my original position?" And I go, "Holy shit! Look at that! I mean, they took it, they took it all the way there and turned around. Wow! Well, I thought we were an uptrend till." Come on, man. These things turn around like brutal. If a market's been melting down for 20 hours, and here comes the uh, London Open. Gee, I wonder if anybody's going to come in and buy that or sell that. What's the chance of a reversal coming into the next session? This is loghead shit. Gee, they loved it in Europe. They hated it in the States. I've seen this a million fucking times. So, <clears> how <throat> trend trading? Works all the time. If you've got nice, if you've got good stops, just like trend trading is fucking stupid. Well, I bought because it was pulling back, but I guess pulled back deeper than I fucking thought. Turned out it was the end of trend. I got a little late there. Once it was all converted, my moving average is all great. I was like, and this guy was talking about, do you think they manipulate the market to destroy conventional uh, trading? Well, that, well dude. <laughs> really? The market doesn't go up forever. At some point, that moving average is going to be totally wrong. I don't care how what the length of it is. One period moving average is wrong. Every time it closes down, well, you should have been short. Well, look, it went up. You should have been long. I mean, it's just like a fucking stupid ass. Um, <clears throat> well, it looks like you should have been on the other side. Well, every millisecond, you should be on the other side of that trade. Are you kidding? Energy is... is by him manually taking trades off or manually tra tra taking trades. And I think, I think that <coughs> he would tell you the same thing. But there are so many better ways to do it. There's so many better ways to trade. Um, I mean, when he, when, when he enters every one of his trades, he's putting on 36% worth of risk every time. And every time he's he's putting himself at that 30 35 percent worth of risk now that doesn't mean that my way is better I mean I just showed you that I, I'm in, I went in 20 20 20 percent risk All right so what do I know right So, I um, I extended a hand to Ryan, um, and invited him over to the Discord. He was part of the Discord for a little while, um, and if he is watching this, I was he really? Huh. Well, um, yeah. I mean. <sighs> There's just, trading just involves too much of your life, uh, how, how you see the world. And what you, in, actually thinking that, like I said, that the news is making the market move is just, this is the, you know, let's just say that the, the bridge is sinking, the water's not rising. I really hope that he comes over and and converses with us. And I hope that everybody in, in the chat or in the forum is civil uh, to Ryan, whether you agree with him or not. Well, he just needs a good bitch slapping, this Ryan Brown. But, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I saw Ryan Brown had, uh, responded saying, you know, no. Because, yeah, you have to sort that out yourself. You can't, and the, the problem with the whole idea of a forum chat room is that there's no amount of, um, none of us can help each other. Because unfortunately, life's a do-it-yourself project. And this is the, the heartbreaker of it, is that that's true, right? So we're, we're all kind of stuck having to buy our own underwear and wear our own shoes, and once we break our shoes and they probably won't fit on another person's foot quite right so that's the problem is that for us to rewire ourselves 
or believe that your wiring right now is not proper for trading. You have to lead a secret life in your head of making it okay to not know what's going to happen next. Um, we all have our different ideas and strategies. Uh, I also think that he would do himself a great service if he joins some type of either our group of traders or some other group of traders because Forex can be a very... Or he could join Hot Wives Anonymous. Lonely business if you don't have... Well, this is why I have a, a pet chinchilla. No, I don't know. Um, like only because I feel contaminated by... Since I, if somebody told me, since I'm a contrarian, if somebody said, oh, yeah, you know, the euro's going down, I'd probably think, dude, you're full of shit. Of course, especially if they said it was going down. But I have a trade for, I have a trade for being a contrarian. As it's going down, we place buy stops above price in case it reverses and goes up. Right, in case it should turn the other way. And uh, this is what we do. Um, and this Ryan Brown guy, he's just in too heavy. Like the, he just said, he's risking 30% of the account. Yeah. And he's got the concept of uh, that if he runs wide stops, that he won't get stopped out of the trade. This, you know, this is why people trade without stops because they're like, oh, what a pain in the ass. I just lost money. But you're actually underwater on the trade, so what's the difference? The difference is when you get stopped out, now you have to make the decision to re-enter to maintain the same position. I've done this many times. Had to rebuild a position because my stops were too tight or they were medium tight. And now I'm like, fuck. Man, really? Got to get back in this fuck? Yeah. If I traded really wide stops, I'd be like, huh, survive that fucking shit. But the drawdowns are bigger the bigger you're in. And what is the threshold in people's minds for dollar uh, loss? And it's different for everybody. So that's why nobody can trade anybody else's system because they're not comfortable with the lack of money being made. Or, I mean, in other words, if you're only down three bucks... And your ratios are to make double your money. You'll only make $6 per trade. Some people are like, what's the fucking point? I want to trade bigger so it's worth my while because I'm so smart. Or I'm just lazy. Or I just think, fuck it. It's too much work to put in two tickets. So I just put in one ticket and let the fucking uh, let the, let the uh, chips fall where they may. Uh, right? This is the only thing uh, that's um, separating people is... So people are willing to put in three times the amount of support for um, or buy the insurance policy, buy a couple smaller positions, go for the extra work, and be the guy that covers that part of the market. Because what happens is if McDonald's is trying to, I'm always hearing these ads, we've got a new thing now, it's called cheese on a, I mean, they're, what we do, we impregnated the bun. I mean, what uh, was Pizza Hut? We've injected the crust with cheese, dude. Okay, how about sausage in the crust? Well, that's a good idea. That's our next thing. Okay, it's the ingredients are all the same, but they keep on rearranging this shit. Because otherwise, they have no fucking market spot. And here comes the market, and it does some bizarre spiky move and spiky, 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 <laughs> like the mayhem guy. And uh, um, there you go. You're making money from just having your stuff as an outlier entry on a pending. Anyways, um, let's go back to the video. Um, a group of people to uh, kind of catch you when you fall every once in a while. I know that there's been uh, many times over the last two years where I've been in a really bad place and I've been able to share that with the community and I get nothing but support from you guys. And that goes a long, 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 long way um, in helping me get the ship, you know, or the, the train back on the tracks. Right? If you're alone, 
then you're left to your own thoughts. See, for me, I'm st- I'm more stubborn than this <clears throat> this Brown, Ryan Brown guy. So what I I'm fueled by is people criticizing me, and then I'm like, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. I mean, in other words, people say that you can't just do that. I go, I'll be doing more of that. Thank you. And and right now he's sitting at home. Um, and, and, and it's just him, right? It's just him. I don't know if he's got a support group, but it's just not Ryan. It could be it could be any of you guys that are watching. If you're not part of a group, you, well, it can't be Charles Manson because he died. You kind of you're out on an island doing this all by yourself. Uh, so I hope that he I hope that he he doesn't. I don't know that he needs to, he needs to find help, but at least some camaraderie. Um, um, it just it just helps so much. It helps helps everybody. Everybody needs um, somebody Wall sometime. Star in their life. Yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> Wall Star, Wall, Wall Star can be a big pain in the ass. I thought this Wall Star guy was supposed but to be a guest. On if you can look past that, he's actually a show. pretty smart guy, Mister Clinky Cup. <laughs> Mr. Clinky Cup. I need to I need to change his name to Mr. Clinky Cup. Which I thought was great. So anyway, Ryan, I hope that you, I hope that you reconsider. Come join the forum. Uh, nobody's gonna give you the crap. Yeah, we're gonna have Mazzola. Uh, yeah, don't forget to bring be, a condom, yeah, buddy. Another great thing about uh, another great thing about uh, being part of a forum is is that. Somebody may be may see something that you're doing. Um, just some little thing that you just don't realize that you're doing over and over and over and over and over. Now you have to be willing to accept people's help, also. I think we all know what we're doing wrong, but you know, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not willing to accept people's help. So this is another thing. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I'm doing everything the right way or I wouldn't be doing it. So the conviction you have in anything is going to be pretty much like, dude, shut the fuck up. I know what's going on here. I got it. Like, um, you know, and of course on Jeopardy, you want to be the guy that hits the buzzer and you got You're like, I got that. No, I got that. Jeopardy contestants trade forex, you know, like uh, celebrity Jeopardy for on uh, Saturday Night Live, Sean Connery. But that's some funny stuff, right? Have them trade forex. Um, Euro dollar for three hundred, Alex. But of course, the Jeopardy there, you show up with money. <laughs> In the Forex Jeopardy show, you show up with ten grand. <laughs> How much can you walk off the show? That's a, you know what? They should make a game show where, okay, to, to be a contestant, you need to bring ten grand to the show. I'm telling you, it's gonna go there. We're gonna see that. Fuck this showing up and goddamn, uh, you know, it's just a one piece of luggage and say I'm here to win. Fuck showing up and uh, wearing a suit and tie. <laughs> they show up with bags of money, and then they go, "Okay, let's see how you do now." <laughs> Can you imagine if Jeopardy was like that? Hey, you want to double? What's your ratio <laughs> before you start the game? You pick your ratio, <laughs> then they quiz you. Hey, you know what? If you're good, if you know all about, if you read any fuck every stupid fucking book ever written, and you know geography. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like rollerball for fucking nerds. I can't want to see that. And bring your, you could die. Oh, it's either, um, but instead of dying, you're dying when you're losing money though, because it's your, it's if you spent hours working for that money, and now you're putting it at risk, or not. And the thing is, if you want to cure this feeling of missing out, like I said, this is a very it's it's a valid fear because you know if you're not participating in these markets in some degree, 
you're a fool because you know it's either going up or down. So at what point do you say I'm wrong? Is it the 300 pip stop or the 500 pip stop? You know. Anyways. Uh, you know, we get. I, I think a lot of traders get. <coughs> a lot of traders get in. Excuse me. In this mindset of I'm right and you're wrong. I'm right and you're wrong. You know, the way I trade is right and the way you trade is wrong mentality. I think there's this. And then, and, you know, you don't. It, but it is true. You can't install tile by putting the mortar on top and placing it on the wall. Just because you're putting mortar on tile, you have to put it on the proper side or it won't adhere. I do believe trading, um, it's obvious that you need to, um, you know, you need to either pull the trigger when you're in front of your terminal or you have to place an order that may get filled later. There's only really two entries, two ways to get in. Either you're going to passively get in at predetermined prices or you're going to sit there and watch every price pulse and go, okay, I can see the rhythm here. I think that in the next, you know, so... Or you could not know the rhythm and still pull the trigger. So I'm just talking about making money. Uh, in other words, making money in a, uh, a system that would make sense. Hey, we're up, we're down. We're up, we're down. And, and another problem here is that these fucking candlesticks, God damn it, stop it. Just show the closing prices because you can't fucking tell the price pulses here at all. My view is either go bars only. And I put a moving average of one on top of the bar so I can see the price pulses. Or just put a line chart up. Just get used to trading with uh, a, a dollar risk uh, or a pip risk and just put a line chart up. And this, another beauty of that, a line chart only, is that you'll never experience the, uh, you won't pay attention to the fact that it's a doji. You'll just see, hey, we closed it support is a structure it's a true structure trading is to have closing prices only there's no structure in a wick it's that's a tick structure right what would it cause the wick a triple top on the one and a half minute chart could be on a, on a five minute bar or a 15 minute bar was that the ultimate place to get in oh yeah dude that was a triple top on the three minute chart inside of an 18-minute bar. And I've run all those time frames. I had trade station. I could make any bar I wanted. You have a tick bar. So without the data, make it a rosier picture. Question comes, do I place pendings at that trough? Do I babysit for entries at that edge, that trough, the resistance? The Do I hold through a vacuum fill? Those are all the questions like, well, I'm not comfortable holding through a vacuum fill. Okay. It's like karate. Are you are you comfortable being in a... Uh, do you want to punch or do you want to pin people to the ground? What are you comfortable doing? Well, I'm not comfortable punching somebody. It's kind of violent. I'd just rather choke them to death. Okay. How do you feel about shooting somebody with a gun? Oof, kind of noisy. My ears ring. How do you feel about a samurai sword? Oh, quiet. Brutal. I think I'm going to go samurai sword. So are you a samurai sword guy or are you a gun guy? You shotgun guy where you put a bunch of orders out there? They all work. All those work. Under the right conditions, they all work perfectly. People aren't used to dealing with failure. I haven't talked about this in a while, but in order to be a good trader, I think that you have to be able to deal with uh, failure and accept losses because it's part of trading. Um that's absolutely true. You're losing every day you're alive. A part of you is dying or metamorphosizing. Um, well, in the case of human beings, you can, your brain is plastic, so supposedly you can. And you can. You can get new pathways going. You just have to change your environment. You have to do, you have to do some different action. Take yourself there. You can do it. You can do it. So it can be done. And um, so if you have a bad morning or a bad month or a bad week or a bad day, um, it's going to happen 
it also could be a bad day, not that you didn't, not because you lost money, but because you missed an opportunity. A missed opportunity can be as bigger than a loss. Um, the weight of missing out on, uh, you know, God damn, I could have been, uh, you didn't lose any money, but you can see the trade you should have taken. And you think, well, next time I'll take that trade. And next time you take that trade, it doesn't work out. And you're like, you know, uh, I don't know. Now, as soon as you have five trades like this where one kind of worked out, one did work out, maybe I tried different strategies. Not the strategy problem. It's the fact that every trade's a losing trade. Every trade's a losing trade. Guaranteed. fucking teeth. As soon as you pull the trigger, you're down commissions of the spread. No, you're in a loss. It's how much is it? What is the size of this loss? It's not It's not win or lose. It's how much did you win, how much did you lose. It's, it's not a hard... There's nothing... It's binary from the statistical standpoint. And this is when people get into the stupid shit with the... Well, it does the strategy and it worked out great. Oh, f great. With the volatility based on that one stop you ran and maybe you had a static stop. There's no way to measure that shit because you're down on every trade of that fucking thing. Now, if you trade with a 1,000 pip stop, I go, it looks pretty good on paper. Now, his system looks like it is built on a 500 pip stop, this Brian Brown guy. That's why he's winning, 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 big drawdown. Winning, 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 big drawdown. And if you start the system... You don't know when it's like a it's like a Russian roulette. You don't know when that thing's going to kick in, when it's going to go a drawdown. And what he also he's doing is, he's like, I'm going to go test this on other currency pairs, dude. The whole concept is one single concept. Besides, I can save you all that back testing and say how much you willing to risk on this one fucking idea. You need like twenty ideas running in this shit, dude. This is a real fucking market. This isn't like, well, I got this really good system that works good with a thirteen and a and a and a, and a fourteen moving average when they cross over. Of course, until it goes sideways, eighty percent of the market's whipsawed, eighty percent of the market's ranging. So counter trend trading's got to work just like trend trading. It's not that it, it, well, Ryan Brown just oversized the fucking thing and loaded up for fucking too long, and he won't ride it back. Pound, he could be right in three months or three uh, weeks. He could be completely right about the trade, but in the meantime, you know, uh, yeah. So what the fuck? The guy doesn't get. He's an investor. When you trade that lot, what that wide to stop? You're a fucking position trader, investor, or swing trader. And I think that that's just so much easier if you have a group of people to fall back on when, when you're going through hard times. But but as it is now, Ryan or anybody else... Dude, only if they have really good beer, really good drugs. If you go through those hard times, what do you do? You just... You, know, you pull your hair, head out and you go on to another... You go on to another strategy. Um, and that's just not very productive. So I, I, hope he, I hope he accepts the invitation and... Uh, you know, I even have ideas about his own strategy. So if you're out there and you want to talk, you can you can instant message me, and I'd be I'd be happy to. We don't have to talk online or anything like that, or on the internet. That's that's no fun. So um, I like talking to you. Right? I like to, I talk too much. Um, but hey, you know. If you pause, I'm going to say something. It's just too awkward to have silence, you know. It's awkward. All right, so trying to make another go at it here on the dollar. My euro dollar trade did survive. But my pound dollar did get taken out. Right here at the top. Probably the stop loss is a little too, too tight. See, this this is this is what I'm worried about. My stop loss is being too tight. We'll have to watch this going forward. So just put the stop loss there. If it takes it out, the trade's over. I look. So, anyways, I'm gonna close up my video here. I'll come back and do another video about the 50 pip grid. Okay, so I'm just going to 
to upload this thing. Two hours, 44 minutes, it says. Anyways, that's my two cents. That's my story. Sticking to it. <laughs>